Welcome to game night! Yay! We're officially underway. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us on Twitch and YouTube. And then later, or to, uh, Twitch and Facebook and later YouTube. Uh, we have to do a little bit of a thank you before we get started. Um, we, uh, I've reached a milestone in our YouTube career. We've reached 25 subscribers! <laughs> thank so, you guys. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you without your guys' support in this, we just wouldn't be doing Well, we'd still be doing it, but we wouldn't be recording it. <laughs> Nobody would see it. <clears throat> Nobody would see it. <laughs> and don't forget to mention our lovely YouTube editor. Oh! Uh, Kilted, Kilted Elephant uh, Productions, who's oh, yeah. doing all of this work for us, is another thing that is on the list to talk about right after this, so thank you for the segue. Uh, <laughs> without this guy right here, you wouldn't see all the cool YouTube videos yes. and on editing and everything like that. And he takes yeah. care of all the big setups and everything, yeah. so thank you, Wade and Rhonda. Uh, thanks to uh, everybody here, actually, is, is just kind of doing this for the fun of it. We're, not, we're two people short tonight. If you notice, Brad and Mike are not here. Uh, they had some things they had to take care of, so they're not with us tonight. And which means we're Bobby not, is not here. Well. And Bobby's not here either. I'm sorry. Bobby's excuse me. Not here. Yeah, Bobby's not here. Um, other than that, this is what you got tonight. And since Mike's not here, we're doing something a little different. If you haven't noticed what's sitting in front of Dale there, is the Ghostbusters <clears throat> International GBI role playing game. So tonight, we're running. Ghostbusters! 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 So with that, Dale, give us a quick introduction of the game, please. Okay, so tonight we are playing Ghostbusters the role-playing game. Uh, technically, Ghostbusters International, which is the, I guess you'd say, second edition. Uh, it's a game, obviously, based on the, the movies, but you create your own franchise, your own characters. Uh, yes, the Ghostbusters are... Actually in this world, but it's all about you and your team creating their own franchise and doing your own ghost busting. Uh, it's, it's really humorous, it's really funny, kind of loose. If you enjoyed our tune game that Wade ran, this is going to be right down that alley. Uh, we, we, it's kind of not meant to be serious, and we usually go way overboard with it. So if you're a fan of the Ghostbusters movie, the real Ghostbusters cartoon, anything like that, you're going to love this. So, uh... Yeah, that's that's what we're playing, and we'll talk about rules and stuff as we get started. The game rules are stupid simple. <laughs> it's a really fun game, and it's it's kind of like Tune. It's it's really easy to learn. So when you create a character, you have four stats: brains, muscles, moves, and cool. Obviously, they're pretty self-explanatory. Brains is how smart you are. Muscles is how strong you are. Moves is how agile you are. Cool is how cool you are. It can be whatever you want. Uh, for each stat, you'll assign it a number, and then you get a talent for each stat, but you only get one. You pick that, and then you get extra dice based on your talent. So, for example, <laughs> the character I'm playing as an NPC is Steve Chase. So, yeah, you get your four talents and your four skill or stats, and then you choose a goal for your character. Steve, right? Yeah. Your, char your character's goal could be soulless science, okay, which is what Steve. Egon he, He's had. just borrowing a name for the night. God, relax. <laughs> he's kind of green and reptilian. Yes. Uh, soulless science is a good example. That's Egon's goal. Sex is Peter Venkman's goal. Uh, I guess you could say collecting a good paycheck is Winston's goal. Right. And Ray's is study or research. Um, so when you create your character... You pick a goal, and every time you achieve that goal during a game session, you get what we call brownie points. Brownie points are points that get handed out if you succeed in things, if you make us laugh, if you do something completely outlandish that actually works, you might get brownie points. At the same time, you can spend brownie points to get yourself out of trouble. If you're about to be slimed by a ghost, you can spend some brownie points to avoid that fate. But you have to explain what you do or how it happens. The funny thing is, if you explain it in a really humorous or entertaining way, you might get some of those brownie points back. You'll get a deducted cost. So that's kind of fun. Uh, as far as that, that's basically the rules of the game. You have six ciders. Everything is six ciders. One of your six ciders is known as the ghost die. I don't know if you can see that very well. But that is the ghost die. It's the number six. So when you make a roll, you roll... If I'm using my brain's talent, or my brain's skill, which is four, I would roll four six-siders, but one of them has to be that ghost die. Right. 
The DM, or the GM, as also known as the Ghostmaster, will basically give you a target number, a difficulty number. And say the, t the difficulty number is 8, and I'm rolling 4 dice. If I make the roll and don't roll a ghost, everything's fine, I succeed. If I don't make the roll and don't roll a ghost, I fail. If I roll successfully and a ghost, the ghost pops up, I did it, but there's some little effect, like a side effect that might not be, <laughs> might not be great. Uh, if I fail and the ghost pops up, I failed spectacularly and something really bad and often humorous happens. Um, the brownie points, as I said, you can use those to get out of trouble. Um, nobody dies in this game. Uh, it's well, except for the ghosts, but they're already dead. So, but your characters, they if you're in if the Ecto One suddenly explodes and you're all sitting in it, you're basically sitting there in charred rags with smoke coming off your hair in a twisted metal husk that was the Ecto One, and you instantly just say, "I'm going to the hospital," <laughs> and you might get deducted brownie points. But in, it's very rare that anybody actually dies in this game, as far as the Ghostbusters themselves. It lends itself to that cartoon humor. And other than that, that's kind of the rules. Like I said, it's really fun. It's really easy to learn. Uh, it's kind of hard to track down, but I know you can find it online. If you can find a copy of it, it's out of print, as far as I know. So it's Hundreds and hundreds of dollars yeah. to buy this game now. So. Yeah. Published by West End Games. Yes, West End Games. Yes. Thank who, you, West End Games. Who for brought us such game. great games as Paranoia. <laughs> so, yeah. West Thank End you. Games had a lot of stuff. They even did the Men in Black game, I think. Yes, I think. Yeah. Don't forget, folks, uh, jump on all of our social media. We're trying to reach a 1,000 followers and subscribers on our YouTube mm -hmm. as well as our TikTok. We have our board up here with all the information on it. You can get to all of our stuff through our link tree on any of our social media platforms. Uh, stop in, give us a give us a look, give us a like, give us a follow, give us a share, flip us off, do whatever. <laughs> if we get to 250 on YouTube or and or TikTok, we're giving away both of Steve's sets of dice. He has two sets in that bag. So one set goes to YouTube, the other set goes to TikTok. So the first one to get there gets the first set. So they said follow us, subscribe, get a chance to win some cool swag at 250. Our, on our march to 1,000, we got to get 1,000 so we can go live on YouTube. Now Dale also, after going about three or four episodes of Ghostbusters with us, he came with us with the idea of, hey, what if Ghostbusters met the men in black, met the RIPD department? Yep. And we said, yes! <laughs> so we have created the franchise crossover, as I call it. So everybody yeah, has a Ghostbuster character. The corner. Everyone has an MIB character. This yeah. And what we okay, did cool. for their name was I had a bunch of Scrabble tiles. You drew a tile, and that was your letter. You had to come up with your backstory from that. And then the RIPD, I made a bunch of personas and uh, things that your weapon would look like. So we've done two franchise crossovers so far. And I'm, I'm working on another one because I know everybody wants to do that again. And, and this, so do I. And this is before the Kickstarter crossover between the yeah, Ghostbusters yes. and, the, was like, and the Men, Men in Black. I which is now out that there. just for the miniatures. Mm -hmm. right. we, we were trendsetters. Yeah. The character I'll be playing is an NPC for the game, uh, Steve Chase. He's kind of the guy who started this franchise and put out applications for hire. Uh, his brains is a four, which is pretty good. Uh, his talent is invent equipment. His muscles is a 2, which isn't that good, but his talent is climb. His moves are 3, and he has the skill drive. And cool is 3, and he has bluff. Uh, the talents are all 3 dice more than your trait, so he's pretty good at all those. Uh, he's about 35 years old, red hair, blue eyes, about 5'9", five, five and his goal is to help people and spirits. Um, he's about... 190 pounds and is kind of the unofficial Spangler, but he's more of the straight man of the group. He's <clears throat> not as crazy. I'm Serling Pertwee. I am a uh, scientific uh, spirit hunter uh, and, and exorcist and that's and a researcher. And that's how I got involved with the Ghostbuster organization. Uh, I got brains of four with library science, uh, muscles of three with boxing. 
I uh, got moves of three with sneak and cool of three with oratory. So one time I little kid saw us uh, come out of a house and everything was just kind of really a shambles and crazy and I just looked at him before I got in the Ecto one and said, kid, don't do drugs. <laughs> Alright, my character name is Natasha what? Pet Petrovna. Yeah, what he said. Petroleum. <laughs> Petrovnica. Something along those lines. Uh, 30 years old with electric purple hair and a Russian motorcycle stunt rider. Awesome. So I'm playing Boris. Uh, Boris Godunov. And <laughs> he's a Russian who is... Uh, he's actually a acrobat. His moves is five and his acrobat skill is at eight. So he's... That's his specialty. His goal is to get enough attention through this Ghostbusters thing to get his own act somewhere in like Vegas or whatever. He's um, that's his main outlook in life. He doesn't care about the ghosts so much. It's just they get Ghostbusters get lots of attention, so he figures he can get attention too. Hey everybody, my character for Ghostbusters tonight is Jackie O'Hare, who goes by the nickname Jackrabbit. He is a uh, kind of a redneck in a little bit of a way, the redneck, redneck techie. Uh, he is male, he has brown hair, he's about 6 foot 4 inches tall, 29 years old, brown eyes, about 268 in the weight, and his goal is to find Bigfoot. Um, his tags are he's rustic tall outdoorsman and a survivalist so he's constantly like a lot of his uh ghostbuster outfit has camo highlights <laughs> um other than that his talents are cryptozoology duct tape creations firing weapons and survival so that is jackrabbit for ghostbusters okay, international all right you guys ready to start yes yep. sir Ooh. all right so you guys are at your Ghostbusters franchise. Um, the old abandoned previous earlier airport in Coopersville, Ohio. Yes, I asked these guys where they wanted their franchise to be situated and they decided Coopersville, Ohio. So we went with it. And it's an old abandoned airport and if you can see this, let me know if I'm showing that off right. Yep. That is their headquarters and the layout. Nice. It's basically an old Quonset hut that's on an old airfield. Let me show it to these guys. And two-story brick building. So it's an old Quonset hut in Coopersville, Ohio. Too much light behind it really. Too does. much light? Oop! Yeah. Okay. With the light right above you. Oh, I see. Well, if you can't see it, should I put something behind it? Yeah, show it to the DM out. cam. Hmm? He already did. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah. And I'm recording the DM cam, so you can just... Don't have to worry about that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, whether or not you show the... Facebook. Oh, yeah. Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> this is called DM I guess, Aerobics. <laughs> I guess you guys get to see this, too. So, let's see. It's up to you as to whether or not it looks good. How's that? Can you see that? Meh. Does it need something behind it? Yeah. Is that better? Oh, way better. Okay. Can you see it? Yep. Okay. So that is their Quonset hut. Their, their version of a firehouse in Cooper, Coopersville, Ohio. Uh, you guys have an oops, sorry. You guys have an Ecto One replica vehicle, so it's basically the old standard Ecto One that you drive around. Although, because Natasha is a stunt rider, she has kind of the equivalent of Ecto Two from the female Ghostbusters movie, the motorcycle. And mm -hmm. Steve had actually built that, so you've been using Steve's motorcycle. Okay. So you've got that available as well. Um, we have a comment on the TikTok. Uh, it's actually Ben. Coming oh. in there. So Ben now has three TVs in his living room. Ben, ben you got to seek some help. We need a big Twinkie for this. Yeah. <laughs> we do, we do. I think the Twinkies are gone. Oh, oh no, the box is still sitting there. So. That right. could be deceptive. It's like a checkbook. Just because there's checks in it doesn't mean there's more money in the bank. Just because the Twinkie box is sitting there doesn't mean there's Twinkies in it. I can't be out of money. I still got checks. Right. <laughs> it's the only reason I hate being locked in. So you guys are all at the... Uh, Quonset Hut, the headquarters. Um, 
That was her name. Oh, the great crush. Mm. Oh, the secretary? Sh Shania? Shania. <laughs> or Shania or Shania? Uh, Spelled the same way. Right? Yeah, I always <laughs> pronounce it Shania. Okay, Shania Jones. Shania Jones. She's 21. a college student. She's 21. Um, Dennis, mm. since you're took this next job to as part time, <laughs> Dennis wanting a great crush if you could. <laughs> Dennis is our vendor this evening. Yeah. He charges by the walk. <laughs> Hobble. <laughs> I was gonna say by the walk. What about by the saucepan? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh -huh. So gotcha. you guys are all kind of hanging about. Uh, Steve is probably working down in the basement. Uh, probably fine tuning some gear. Uh, he's actually installing the newest software that has been sent out by Spangler and Stance. It connects your PKE meter and its readouts to a basically in the cloud like a file of Tobin <laughs> Spirit Guide, the Big Book of Supernatural Happenings, the Roy Lance Guide for Spirits. Mm -hmm. So when you scan an entity, if there is a cross-reference that matches that information, it will pull it up in your ectovisor as a heads-up display so you can see what you're dealing with, what class it is, what it is, if it's been encountered before. If it hasn't, when you scan the entity, you can actually log it. It'll tag it and they can actually research it, or if you do the research, you can log it yourself. So any other Ghostbusters who encounter this entity will be able to tell what it is. So uh, he's downstairs. He's almost done with that. What are the rest of you guys doing? It's probably about uh, probably about 10 o'clock in the morning. Did you clarify I, that this happened after the, the, the crossovers? Yes, this is after the crossovers. So it's well, probably about a, a month after the crossovers. Okay. You've been fairly busy like normal, but you haven't eaten, you haven't bumped into any of the MIB or the RIPD lately. So, so it's kind of boring. <laughs> yeah, well, well, yeah. Probably more, relatively. I mean, we're, we're working, but it's not fun more, like it was before. Less more pedestrian. Less interesting than undead aliens. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Just wait it. Yes. Serling is up on the second level, uh, doing online research and. Okay, so basically just uh, doing his normal yeah. studies. Yeah, normal studies, scabbing, see if there's anything popping up on the hot meter scope. Or... Okay, got it. Uh, okay. Boris is out in the no idea. out in the field with the obstacle course, okay. running through it. You know. Just, just kind of doing his thing, yeah. trying to time himself. <laughs> well, just Go. to keep in shape. Okay. So he's... Yeah. So, all right. Uh, how about you? I guess I'm off riding my motorcycle somewhere. Okay. Yeah, I figured you guys use most of the old Air Force, Air, airfield, which this is a pretty small, like, municipal airport. It's yeah. not like O'Hare. You guys have plenty of room to do that, so you've got obstacle courses set up, which, yeah, probably helps deter any burglars... Mm -hmm. Except the fact that there's a Ghostbusters logo and radiation signs on the fence that might, be <laughs> yeah, that yeah. might keep them at bay. Yeah, that might keep them at bay. Just a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, you guys are out doing that, and uh, the phone rings down in the lobby. Oh, where were you? Hmm? Oh, shit. Jack is probably in the nearest set of woods practicing his Bigfoot traps. So right on the other side of the chain link fence. Yep. Okay. All right. Who are you practicing on? Just setting them and just setting them and then. And, and... Throwing sticks at them to see if they're going, you know, like, <laughs> okay. All right. probably fucking up and stepping in one every once in a while because he set two and forgot. Okay, <clears throat> uh, roll your moves. Moves are three, so three die. With one the ghost the, die. One is the ghost die. One, one, one. Okay. Three. All right. But no ghost die. Okay. You guys are practicing, you know, you kind of stop and like... Get your towel, like, yeah. <laughs> Look at that, dude. That's crazy. All one. That they was a good workout. As Natasha basically comes up and kills the motor on her bike. You know, <laughs> Bam! No. You, you hear from the other side of the chain link fence, Ow! <laughs> and probably a string of obscenities shortly after that. Wreck, freck, and smack. Damn. You gonna make it over there? there? No. But then you also think you hear a phone ringing. Maybe. Go ahead and roll your brain brains. You and if you have like a notice. We need a sound effect board. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. No. Wish list. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be on the wish no. list name as long as so we my, my brains is trivia, so. Okay, so just a regular brains to notice this. 
Seven. Uh, Serling, you can roll your brains as well. Uh, for you guys, your target number is going to be... Okay. So you've got... Um, what is your cult studies? So, no. so three dice. I'd say your target number is going to be eight, and your target number is going to be five. I know it needs to be the ghost okay. die. You have the white one. one? Yeah, white one makes more sense. All the way in the other building? And then what? <laughs> well, then it's connected <laughs> to this room, too. Oh, okay, there's an exception. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but it's probably hooked up to... Is, like, is, is there a little, little bell? Here, up, upstairs and downstairs. Eleven counting the ghosts. Copy of the extension. Yep. Uh, no, it's just to let you know that the phone is ringing. Mm -hmm. You oh. guys don't really. Just you've just never wait. actually ran oh, an extra line rather than. Here. Awesome. <laughs> to do list. Yeah. Run ahead in eleven. By the way. Okay. What'd you roll? Seven. I had seven. Okay. Uh, Rob, you can go ahead and roll. Uh, target number of fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> to hear it? Yeah. Or just to You're get out of the track. Because not only <laughs> oh, and goes, five, four, and a deuce die. Okay. So not only are you on the other side of the air airfield mm -hmm. in the woods, but you're also in immense pain. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like undoing the trap and Wait. you roll the ghost. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh well you hear something, but you're not sure what it is. And you're like Oh my god, I think it's a tornado. <laughs> I think there's a tornado drill happening. <laughs> and you've got to get to safety. You're out you know, stuck in a trap in the woods, which <laughs> will just draw lightly lightning like none other. You gotta get you gotta get somewhere safe, like a ditch or back in the hell in the headquarters. So. Okay. I will struggle to get out of the trap then. Okay. Go ahead and roll your muscles. Target number how well this is meant for Bigfoot? Yeah. <laughs> It was a snare trap, so I'm probably hanging upside okay. down in a tree. <laughs> okay, uh, roll your muscles, target number of, uh, let's say, seven. Got it. Okay. No ghost. Uh, no ghost? No ghost. Okay, so you managed to reach up and kind of loosen it around your ankle and not let go, so you <laughs> loosen it and kind of hang and drop <laughs> back down. Went, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so you drop down on the ground and... Uh, don't really twist your ankle. It didn't hurt that much. It was just more <laughs> going numb. <laughs> more, yeah. So you more managed to hobble your way to the fence, and by the time you get to the chain link fence, you can get through it or over it, however you got through out. Through it. I mean, there's yeah. a. I won't try to climb it. And you could, by the time you hit the tarmac, you're you're able to run. And a, and a dead run. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna do that. Uh, you hear the phone faintly ringing. Mm -hmm. you, you assume from inside because there's no other phone on this airfield. Right. What do you do? I'm going to go answer it. Start heading in. You yeah. don't hear it, but you see her going in. Yeah. Okay. Following along. Not okay. not in any hurry since it's... Right. Just It's just a job. Yeah. <laughs> I'm upstairs on the Quonset HUD. Is Steve down below well, working on the car? Uh, no, he's in the basement of the firehouse. Oh, down by the containment there. center working oh, on okay. the equipment. All right. Uh, what, uh, what day of the week is this? You said it's 10 in the morning. What day? Oh, uh, probably a Wednesday. A Wednesday? Is Shania here? Uh, no, or? she is off today. She's off today. She's okay. off so, today. She had finals. Well, I guess I better go onto the phone. Okay. I'm going to run down the stairs and into the next building. Okay. So as you guys get to the building, you'll see Serling come from the Quonset hut and run right into the building. So he's going to get to the phone first, but you can go right in after him and right. find out. Uh, roll your brains. If yet, I, you, Neither one of you have a notice talent. Okay, so just roll no. your brains. Uh, target number seven. So what? I'll play it anytime. Yeah. yeah. Choose which one is your ghost die. The white, of okay. course. Who's your bait? Four. Four. So. Nine. Thirteen. Okay. How'd you do, Boris? I had a five and a ghost. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So you look behind you, and you kind of see. Jackrabbit kind of running across the tarmac, mm -hmm. but he's he apparently fell in the woods because he's got twigs and branches all stuffed on him, and he's you <laughs> this know, is normal. Not normal he's kind of a big guy. Way. He's got the camo stuff, and he's probably got like twigs and shrubbery in his hair. A little bit on the right <laughs> so he's kind of running up, kind of loping because he's got maybe a, get in a the, little bit of a get twisting. in the hut. There's a tornado coming. When you look behind you, you're like, <laughs> it's Bigfoot. I can't believe. It. You're like, I gotta go get Jackrabbit because there he is. 
Okay. So you see Bigfoot running at you. You're like, wow, what happened to him? Okay. Like and screaming about a tornado. Yeah. Should I ask him if he got caught in one of his own traps? Okay. There's a tornado coming. There's in that a tornado. Case, I will Get take inside. Off and go running for looking for Jack. Okay. <laughs> Since so, he was in the woods, I'll go. Yeah, yeah, he came from the woods, so it's got to be big. He runs past the Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> to go get Jack. <laughs> oh my God, they're right there. I just ask you if he's got any Jack. Jack. on traps again. <laughs> I'm too hysterical about the tornado. Yeah. yeah. I'm just screaming about the tornado. Get inside, get inside, tornado, yeah, tornado. It is like a sky blue, clear, sunny day. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. about 70 degrees. It's a beautiful day. We're all going to die, woman. Get in the house. So, inside, uh -huh. you, you run in, the phones are in, you can pick it up. Yeah. Ghostbusters, we eat ghost toasties for breakfast. Uh, hello, this is Mrs. Havisham. I was wondering if you could, uh, uh look into something for me. Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, where and uh, what's, what is the situation as you perceive well, it? Well, my address, and she gives you an address, and okay. she says, uh, I'm having a problem in my attic. The noises are just getting much, much worse, and I, I didn't sleep very well at all last night. Attic noises. Has this been going all night, or when did these originally start? Uh, about two years ago. <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> it, but it just, it's gotten worse in the last couple nights. It's been ex it got exceptionally bad, and I just can't handle it anymore. Very well, man. Um, uh, we will be uh, right out, man. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And she mm -hmm. kind of repeats the address. You can tell yes. she sounds like she's maybe a little older. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so you jot all that down? I jot all that down, and thank you, ma'am. We'll be there directly. Okay. We got one! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Steve, obviously, you hear something bang and crash, and he's like, ow! And he comes running up the stairs, rubbing his head. Um, in the door comes... Bigfoot, apparently, or Moss Man or something. You see Jackrabbit covered in twigs. He's brushing it. Leaves are dropping. <laughs> you're like, tornado. Uh, uh, and here you're like, you already know. <laughs> I'm just run for the basement. Run Is there a the basement? basement? Yeah, that's where Steve's coming up from. So yeah. he opens the door as you barrel toward him. <laughs> he just steps calmly inside. Tornado! Jack, we got a call. Ain't no wind out I'm there. I'm not going out in no damn tornado to fight no ghost. There's no tornado. Okay. You come inside and you hear you hear what's going on. So mm. You know there's no tornado. Right. So Steve's like, oh, we got a call? No. Uh, that's Goofy got his stuff caught. No, up we got a call. That's why the, the alarm is ringing. I hit the button. Well, yeah, that part. Yeah. We got a call. Okay. All right. You're up. Jack. What? He kind of looks around and is like, where's mm -hmm. Boris? Is he still outside practicing? Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> the timing. <laughs> Who are those guys? <laughs> oh, those are our new recruits. The new recruits, <laughs> the three stooges have showed up. Well, we're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe not. Yeah. Well, you know, curly MO, yep. So, so he's Come on, like, Jack, we got a call. Ain't no tornado. Baloney. Uh, no baloney either. That's, that's for supper now. We gotta go shopping first. Did y'all hear the sirens? Or the warnings? Or whatever? That's the alarm that we got a call. <laughs> Steve's like, yeah. Should I roll my smarts? Uh, actually, yeah. I'm good luck no, with that one. you don't have to. It's been long enough. You basically are in the basement and Steve had the TV on. Oh. And they're like, today's weather is beautifully sunny. No chance of precipitation at all. <laughs> I think we're so haunted. Enjoy your day, Coopersville. That kind of I come thing. up out of the basement. I think we're haunted in those woods over there. So you were okay, at the Okay, well, oh, in the woods. well, we'll take care of that later. Right now, we got a paying customer. Yes, paying gig. All right, let's go. I'm <laughs> shaking off. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you go out to the chain link fences as you're looking. You're like, I don't see him. Oh, I'm never going to find him. And you kind of look back, and the Bigfoot is gone. Yeah. So you're like, oh, crap. So what do you do? Um, call out for it, you know, Jack! Okay. Jack! <laughs> Basically, as you guys get suited up and start to head out to the car, you hear out by the channel, Jack! What? 
<laughs> yeah, you see, you see everybody pretty much filing out of the headquarters, kind of moving pretty quick toward the, the hut. And Steve's like, we got a call! <laughs> okay. You can use your acrobatics and parkour your way back to the house. <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, let's see. 10, 20, 30. <laughs> okay. Dang. All right. You, le you use the chain link fence and do the run up and kick off of it and go about, you know, 15 feet before you land at a full dead run facing the right way. You leap off her handlebars and as it goes off the kickstand you like surf the bike for a little bit and it as it lays over on its side gently you kind of tumble off and kick off one of your obstacles and it lands on a skateboard and you basically shoot right up to the door and as you stop you even tail kick the skateboard and catch it by the, the front truck and be like yeah park it against the door and go get your stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you guys are on your way out to a call. Uh, I have the equipment cards. So, what's everybody taking? Well, I have, what I have written down is ecto goggles, slime blower, walkie talkie, and ghost trap. Okay. Is that what you still want to take? Because you can yeah. swap it up anytime. No, that sounds like pretty good. So, ecto goggles, slime blower, the ghost trap, and mm -hmm. what was the other thing? The walkie-talkie. Walkie-talkie. Okay, so there is your equipment. Okay. Jack has the mm -hmm. ecto goggles, the proton pack, the walkie-talkie, and the ghost trap. Okay. I'm gonna pass those down to Jack Rabbit. Mm -hmm. Okay. No um, idea. Uh, walkie-talkie, PKE meter, goggles. Now these cards were a. Uh, these didn't come with the game, right? Or did they come with the game? Uh, no, the, the original game had equipment cards, okay. and I still have those, but when I went to, and I cannot for the life of me remember the website, <laughs> but there was a group that was actually redoing the equipment cards, and they produced these, and I bought a deck, and they are really awesome equipment cards, kind of updated versions, and they also had the green slime die and the laser etched Ghostbuster dies. Ghost Eyes for the game, so I bought all that. If you can find that site again, I will send it. Oh, I'll yeah. get in the post. Ah, in the, I can't remember so. the name of it. Sorry, but yeah, yeah. So, so you probably have goggles. Ecto goggles, walkie talkie, PK meter. I have no idea. And uh, proton pack. Proton pack. Okay. I don't know where. Yeah. Right. Well, that would be down down here proton pack, PK meter, and ecto goggles since he just downloaded the software. <laughs> and <laughs> it's hard. Are running out of the, the door getting into the Ectomobile song. Yeah, no. And Steve is going to drive, so he's got the car keys. Which I'm really happy about that, because it's got the little Ghostbusters keychain. And I got one of them. <laughs> no surprise there. No, I'm not a geek at all. Don't worry about it. No, okay. never suspected it. <laughs> so, what are you taking? Well, she's going to have the goggles. Um... Probably, you're going to have, take the a PK meter? Yeah, I guess. Uh, probably a proton pack? Probably. Okay. Um, she gets the beach uh, yeah. kit. <laughs> yeah, some of the equipment. You want walkie-talkie? Mm, sure. Okay. So, there you go. Yeah, some of the Ghost Busters equipment, obviously, is what we've been handing out. They also have a, mega, a bullhorn. Dark energy generator, parachutes, the beach kit that comes with a radio and a towel and an umbrella, the alpine gear, the scuba gear. So you can actually go anywhere you want with the Ghostbusters now. Does the proton pack work underwater? That's a good question. <laughs> Don't know. Mm. Nobody's mm -hmm. trying it. <laughs> Bubba will. He'll yeah. volunteer. Yeah. Okay, viewers, that's your homework for the night. Find out if the proton pack works underwater. Let us know. It's a tiny little sucker. Yeah. Okay. You know what's it's funny is I greasy. That's a disinfectant. Oh. I had a I had a four terabyte hard drive when they first came out, and it was about as big as that box of Kleenexes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> 
but the 18 terabyte one we have is the size of a Kleenex box. And we have in our wish list on Amazon. <laughs> wink, wink. We are shameless whores. We don't care. We want stuff. <laughs> Send us stuff. We make better movies when we have better stuff. Yeah. Okay, so you guys pile into the Ecto-1. Kind of starts up. You know, you back out of the Quonset hut. Tear across the tarmac toward the open chain link fence and hit the road into Coopersville. Uh, the address you have is kind of in a little suburbia area of Coopersville. Um, kind of a quiet, uh, quaint residential area. Um, what was your name again? Mrs. Havisham. And you guys get to the address mm -hmm. and kind of pull up in front. And it's a nice little house. It's got the little... White picket fence with the petunias and the little garden boxes up by the doors under the windows. The curtains are like lace, and it's it's painted like a nice little. And the kind of a, runners are in the intestines of most small children. Oh, <laughs> it's got like a yard gnome out front, and it, it looks it's like it's very chewing on a rabbit. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no topiary. No, it's got the, no. La the last house call we did. <laughs> and the, we had to fight the topiary on the way out. Yeah. And the furnace. Yeah. Now, it looks like it's pretty quiet. Uh, you hear sprinklers and a couple people mowing the lawn in the neighborhood. A lot of older folks. You know, not all, but some. And it's, as you pull up, it's kind of like, as you pull up, it's a quiet, quaint little neighborhood until, until you arrive. And then everybody's like, what? Uh, you pull up in front of the address and... Get in. The house is probably two stories, uh, maybe two and a half stories with the attic. Uh, it's pretty small. It's nothing big. It's not like a big old mansion. It's probably about a size, eh, maybe about the size of this house, but with a another story. Another story, and the little peaked roof. There's always another story. <laughs> so, uh, then next time, as you guys pull up. Stop the car and get out. Um, the neighbors are all, you know, you see curtains parting. You see people coming out on the front door or on the front porch doing this kind of stuff, watching over there, but you're used to it. Go on up to the house. Bum, bum, bum. Yep. Okay. You go up, knock, and the door is answered by a little old lady. She's she's probably like 5'4", uh, white hair, probably in her... 500s. <laughs> Probably in her 60s, maybe late mm -hmm. 60s, but she looks like she's got the whitish hair already. Yes. Um, she's mm -hmm. kind of like flower print dress, little apron. Uh, she kind of answers the door. She's like, oh, you're here. Thank you. Uh, come in, come in. And she opens the door. And when you walk in, it's like walking into your grandma's house. You know, she's got the little carpet runner and a little bric-a-brac on the shelves, like little precious moments, and like little owl figures, and her collection of teacups, you know, and, and the house just smells like baking cookies. You're like, this is... I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah, this is amazing. It's like it's just so quiet. Cool. You hear the clock tick, 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 like a grandfather clock. She comes in. She's like, would you, would you like something to drink? Uh, yeah. A little later, perhaps, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Sir Link, are we? Oh, the nice Okay. Doris um, Havisham. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is, oh, uh, the um, one that attic. Mm -hmm. Yes. Perfect. Yes. The noises. They're the, usually so at night, but they're they're the starting to come all the time now. Yeah. Through the atrium. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Could you lead the way? Yes. And as she says, they they kind of start now, and you're like, could you lead the way? You hear the most inhuman growl echo from upstairs. And it's like... And she just kind of says... Excuse me. Well, there's one. And she's like, come in, this way. <laughs> she just kind of walks up the stairs. And you guys follow her along. She's leading us? Yeah. And then you hear a... Throughout the house. And the, as it gets louder, you can feel the house like shake. And then it stops. Ecto goggles. Yep. Steve's mm -hmm. already got the PKE meter out and the ecto goggles down. Yeah, he's. Yeah, we got that too. I'll go ahead and pull the wand also. I'm going to get the trap ready. And, and pre ignite the, <laughs> the ghost uh, or the <clears throat> proton pack. Okay. <laughs> got that too. There you go. <laughs> 
a <laughs> Well, that's no big deal. We're all just wearing unlicensed nuclear accelerators on our back. <laughs> yes. Oh. Wasn't paying attention. So basically, you guys start sweeping for valences. You don't notice anything in the house. There is a small spike in PKE energy. Right behind you. And as you get upstairs, it's kind of like, okay, there's maybe a little something here, but it's not major. She takes you down to the end of the hall and up on the ceiling you see that little trapdoor thing. Mm -hmm. As you guys walk toward the end of the hall, it's doing that beep, 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 beep. And are they, are the goggles picking up anything? Yeah. Uh, yeah. As you put the goggles down, it, it looks like you're staring into the sun when you look at that attic door. I'm like, whoa, whoa. I put yeah. my goggles up. Like, we got a hot song. <clears throat> so there is something in the attic, obviously. She says, yeah, it's been going on for a while now, and I've just always kind of gotten used to it. Uh, my father left me this house years ago, and he always told me not to go in the attic, so I didn't. But when I, when the noises started, they weren't horrible bad. But uh, now they've, getting, they've, they've just gotten worse over the years, and in the last couple weeks they've been getting... I can barely get any sleep with this thing going on. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Um, Steve's kind of like, well, ma'am, yes, you have something in your attic. We'll, we'll look into this. She's like, okay, well, I'd appreciate it. Uh, how much is this going to cost? Mm. So I, I know how much to uh, save back. Some stuff. Okay. Out I'll the... pull some paperwork so, out. And, um, assuming a standard contract for a standard ghost, um, uh, removal and storage, uh, you know, yay, yay much, and I, I, I show her the paperwork. Uh, of course, uh, other ex extending circumstances uh, may incur some additional fees, man. Okay. All right. Well, I guess I'll just but wait for the, the bill. This, this, this is the, the, the baseline here. Okay. And how much... Did you do the standard billing? Standard, standard billing okay. thing. So it's going to be about five thousand dollars to look into this. And she's like, "Okay." And Steve kind of does that. Looks at you. Looks at the paper. Looks at her. Looks at you. Looks at the paper. Uh, well, there might be some. Uh, I, I, we might have some discounts going on this week. <laughs> Rib Steve. We're, 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 <laughs> he's like, God. Which, uh, we'll, we'll double check that later. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The ballpark here. Okay. So Steve's like, well, this is the way to the attic? She's like, yeah. And he's like, okay. Who's first? <laughs> yeah. first? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, he looks at everybody like, okay, boys, go ahead. Where's this ladder go? It goes up. You go first. <laughs> So is the ladder so, actually pulled down? Yeah. He, um, Steve actually says, before we open this up, why don't, why don't you go downstairs and just have a seat or or something like that we shouldn't be long we'll just take a look if you're not comfortable maybe there's some neighbors you can visit or something like that she's like well i was thinking about going next door visit my friend beverly she's, he's like yeah why don't you do that do we'll that. just come next door and, and get you when we're done yeah sure like, okay. take her some cookies oh good idea get some tea tea some heroin okay so she goes downstairs <laughs> Heroin. Wow. Cookie teas is like, oh, Beverly provides crack. <laughs> wow. <laughs> She's my crack friend. <laughs> crack hostess. So, Shut up, Steve. <laughs> She's going to go downstairs. Steve kind of looks up and he's like, well. He's talking about the game. Are you going first then? Sure. All right. So... You reach up and it's got the little handle that you pull down. Mm -hmm. I probably have to jump up to get it because I'm because Boris is only five foot six. So oh yeah, he's <laughs> Steve pretty small. <laughs> so well, you can him. jump up really easy and grab it and mm -hmm. pull it down. And as you pull it down, <laughs> yeah, you probably do hear the. <laughs> as everybody's like, <laughs> go ahead, open it. <laughs> got it. So uh, you jump up, pull it down, and as it creaks slowly open. You're like, ugh, and it's, there's nothing. The mm -hmm. little ladder slides out gently, lands. You look up, it's pitch black up there, but okay. you don't hear any noise, you don't smell anything. 
Well, the musty smell of an attic, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So you gonna go at the ladder? Yep. Okay. Uh, does anybody have a flashlight? Oh, we don't have equipment cards, but if you want a flashlight, you, oh, you can have one. Okay. Yeah, they didn't make equipment cards for flashlights. So. All right. What are they thinking? I know. <laughs> so I'll pull the flashlight out, one hand, and hold the slime blower nozzle in the other. And okay. Start yeah, for you, it's kind of like you're, you're, the attic space is like this. So you're like, you might have to take the slime blower off to get through the hole because they're pretty big and bulky. Mm. So you might have to take it off and either put it up first or have somebody hand it up to you. Because the attic space is just one of those. Oh. So you're probably, with a proton pack, anybody's got a proton pack, you can do it, but it's going to be like that tough. But a slime blower, they're big. You're probably okay. going to have to take it off. So just uh, so you know. Here. Hand this up to me. What is it? Your pack? Your slime blower. Oh, is. slime blower pack? Jesus! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay! Like, hold this fridge. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So you go on up with your ladder, right, yep. or with your flashlight, okay? You get to the top of the ladder, and it's kind of dark. You see some piles of stuff, you know, old suitcases, maybe some dead clothes. bodies. There's no, there's no window in here, so it's pretty dark. But as you look, it must be really dark because you can't even, your flashlight doesn't even hit the walls, you know? So it's like, oh, man, there may be drapes up here. You don't know what's going on. But no. you can get up and there's room to stand. And there yeah. would be room for all of you, but you, you'll you probably be standing. Anybody who's over 5'9 is going to be... That's like, me. It's Six angled. Two. So, but you can go on up. 6'4. <laughs> I'll hand you up your pack. <laughs> Seems to be okay. Strap the pack on and start circling around as everybody else is coming up. Okay. Did you have a PKE meter? No. Okay. So, who wants to go next? I'll go next. Okay. You're going to go next? Yeah. Okay. So, you, again... Since I'm already there handing his pack up, I'll just go ahead and go up. Yeah. It's a little tight squeeze for you, because you are a big guy with a proton pack, but yeah. you can make it. You just kind of have to go angled. Yeah. But once you get up there, you're yeah. fine. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a flashlight or a PKA meter or anything? Uh, or he anything? has... I can't remember which took. No, but he has... He... I don't know if he would have a flashlight on him. No, and Jackie probably have a flashlight on. I'm sure he would. Right. Oh, actually. Wait a minute. Doesn't goggles. his pack have the yeah. the lights on him? Because it's the slime blower pack. They have lights on them. Oh yeah, they do. So you can just turn those on. Oh, I yeah. forgot. They get the little right. Yeah, the directional little, headlights. Yeah. Yep. So okay. So you can just click that on. And look around. You're like, wow, this is really dark up here. And as you look around, you come up next. So I would. Yeah, I wouldn't have to. I have one, but I wouldn't. Yeah. Pull okay. Uh, who else? I'll go behind Jackie. Back behind you. Uh, Steve will go next. I got Natasha, goggles you want to bring on. up the rear? Yes. Okay. I got my ecto goggles on. Okay. It doesn't take long for everybody to get up there. The ecto goggles, as you look, it's kind of like you can see. It's like the night vision. Right. So you can see it's like pixelated, colorized versions of all the clothes and stuff, but mm -hmm. you kind of notice it, you, you don't <laughs> see the walls. Like I said, it's, it's so it's dark up here. You're like, oh, man, it is <clears throat> really dark. So, as you guys come up, uh, you have is been kind of wandering around. finished floor, or is it just rafters? Yeah, it's, it's a wooden floor. Okay. So, it's a finished floor. Uh, it's kind of old and dusty and yeah. in need of painting and sanding, but it's there. You see, like, old coat racks and, and piles of clothes and, and luggage, like I said, trunks. Meth lab. Yeah. Yeah. Couple skeletons, no. You, but as you as you look up there, you get to walking around and you notice you're kind of like, man, it's really dark up here. And you notice Jackrabbit, you get up and you kind of walk, move away, and you're looking around. And everybody roll their brains or notice if you have it. Um, Your target number is going to be five. Oh, a success. Oh, okay. both, but a dope, but a ghost. Uh, okay. Six, five, fifteen. What'd you get? Yeah. Fifteen, no ghost. Okay. Fifteen, no ghost, and four, no ghost. Yeah, Twelve, right. no ghost. Right. Twelve ghosts. So Twelve with a ghost. So Twelve with a ghost. ghost is one. Is that what that? All right. Well, no, the if it's a six, then it's a ghost. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Okay. So Jack, you're kind of looking around. And you're like, man, this place. Wow, this is really dark up here. And you kind of start moving across, and you notice like some of the piles of clothes yeah. are like up to your hip, and you're like, man, there's a lot of clothes up here. Wow. Yeah. 
you kind of wander off about 10 feet and you're like wow there's, there's a lot of stuff up here and as you guys all kind of like yeah there it's really dark there's but you notice where's the roof wall? he's not ducking <laughs> there should be yeah you notice so that. i'm walking in and I'm you're like 10 feet away off into the over some pile of clothes and there's sh you should have hit your head by now right but i'm looking around like oh man yeah, and you're you're yeah. like, man, there's all kinds of oh man, look at this. Ooh, Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, check that out. You pull up like a fur coat, and you're like, that would be an awesome Bigfoot costume if I could just oh you know, you're just fascinated it? by some of the stuff you're finding. Right. I get distracted with yeah. the with shopping. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I I'm looking around and noticing he's not hitting his head, and I've not seen a wall. Or a raptor or anything yeah. yet. Yeah. So I openly voice the question, are we in an extra dimensional space? This is a hell of a lot bigger than the attic ought to be. <laughs> yeah, as you kind of wander around, Steve comes up to you and he's like, Hey, do me a favor. Let's let's walk this way about ten paces. Sure. So you and Steve are kind of walking. You notice he's doing the one, two, three, four. You get to about ten paces, and he's like, 11, 12, 13. <laughs> Looks down, shines his flashlight. You see the floor. There's more junk and stuff, like old toys and things. And he's like, the house ended about five steps ago. Hmm. Like the perimeter of the house. Mm -hmm. And he kind of shines his flashlight, and you're looking around. You see more, and it almost looks like dunes of stuff way out there. He's like, yeah, okay. Uh, Serling, I think you're right. I think this is an extra-dimensional <laughs> area or something of that nature. Does that mean the news crews won't see us? Probably not. Oh. Well, you, got, you got one of those in your back pocket, or what? Maybe I should... News crew? No. Maybe I should go to the Ecto and get a, get some rope or something so we can kind of Good measure this thing. Good idea. All right. He starts walking back. And did you guys all kind of wander out a little bit? Or mm, do, okay. With me rolling a ghost, I figure I just wandered. Yeah, you have. Because I'm finding stuff. And yeah. it's like, oh, oh, oh! Okay. You know, uh, Jack it, don't just, uh, stray too far. Stay with the group. You can look over. Yeah. Jack Rabbit's got a fur coat on. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> when you you pop up like a moose. Yeah. <laughs> you get the fur coat and the ant like the antlers that are mounted strapped to your head. And you're like, how do I look? They're like that big, way way over there. You can see his headlights, and you're just out in darkness. You're you're like, I don't know. Hundred yards. A hundred yards away. Hey, from you the... guys! <laughs> yeah, you can. Don't wander off. Hey, you guys! Jack, get over here, please. I'll be there in twenty minutes. <laughs> no, now. Hey, okay. you gonna start making your way back to the group? Yeah, I'll take okay. the antlers off, but I'll keep the fur coat on. Okay. Uh, you guys get back, and Steve is kind of like looking around on the ground with a flashlight. And he's like, "Guys, we have a problem." I'm telling you, you can't find the trap door. It's right over. Um, then we have no problem. <laughs> uh, everything's hunky dory. It was. <laughs> okay, PKE, right here. What are we looking at? Okay, so you start scanning for valences. Yeah, it's it's not oh. off the chart, but it's pretty high. There is obviously some sort of spectral happening happening. Uh, but it's not like a demon class. It's not like Gozer's coming, but it is pretty high on the scale. About midway up, so you're like, yeah, this is something very, very powerful. Uh, as you scan, yeah, you don't, you're looking around, you're like, I know the trapdoor was here. You don't see it. And... I will and, focus even more trying yeah. to find this trapdoor. Are back. you making your way back to the group, too? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. Well, as you kind of look around, you look up, and you're like, you don't see them anymore. And then as you kind of glance over to your right, they're over there. 
but you know you were headed right for him. But when you look down through your activizers and look up, you're heading in a different direction. If this is screwing my survival senses all the hell. <laughs> I know. Kind of like okay, all right. Well, guys, <laughs> you expect to hear that from off to your right. Uh -huh. You hear it from behind you. Jack, how'd you get back there? Stop moving! I'm coming to you. <coughs> uh, we're not. <laughs> uh oh. We didn't move. <laughs> I we run. Haven't moved. Start running. Yeah. Okay. Keeping right. them in, in view, I'm right. all out running, jumping over whatever. Yeah, Jimmy, uh, roll your moves. <laughs> <laughs> I might be in my own dimension. Uh, thirteen. Oh, yeah, thirteen. Okay, yep. so you're you're like hurdling wardrobe trunks, <laughs> you know, and doing all that. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're keeping your eye on them, yep. and you're heading in the right. You're you're joining up with them, so you're good. Okay. And, uh, after. Couple minutes, you managed to. <laughs> you're with the group. Hey! Steve's like, I don't think we should wander far from each other right now. I should probably take this for going off. <laughs> yeah, it's really hot. You're like, yeah. Hey, how you doing? Zap! <laughs> oh, ah, yeah. yeah the carpet. Static electricity. <laughs> Slough it off and throw it in the corner, and it's all soaking wet and sweat. And smells like Bigfoot. Smells yeah. like Bigfoot, yeah. That's what. That's you throw right it off. There. Uh, you kind of all stand around looking for the door, and you hear a thump about 20 feet behind you. Turn around. It sounded like, what it really sounded like is like somebody, like a closet door just thunk, closed. Mm. So it's a thunk. Turn to look. Okay. Uh, you don't see anything. Right off. Right Hello? Off. Got, got goggles on, so that's not showing anything. No, uh, you do see anybody with goggles on. We'll see a little bit of a glow. Coming off to your left, and it's it's like somebody has a candle lit, but it's slowly getting brighter, like increasing in brightness. If you do not have goggles on, you do not see that yet. Okay. Um, okay. Watch as I move, guys. I'm headed for the light. I'm with you. Light. Huh. Steve's like, don't light. go into the light. Isn't that isn't that Headed like a, for it. Okay. Not I'm gonna put a hand on his shoulder, and as we're walking, so. Steve's I, like, well, don't leave us behind. What are you, crazy? So he grabs onto your belt. That's fine. What are you guys doing? Mm. Talking about going to the light. You, the see, you see the light getting a little brighter. Did you have ecto goggles too? Yes. So if you everybody puts their goggles on, right. you can see the light. But, yeah, <laughs> you see Serling is kind of marching that way. Jackrabbit has his hand on his shoulder. Steve's grabbed onto Jackrabbit's belt. They're like, nope. Don't even a so Ghostbuster chain. Do? And I'm going to write in my, uh, what is it? Proton pack? Yeah, that. Okay. All right. So. I got my wand in one hand, the other hand on Sterling's shoulder. Okay. Are you guys grabbing anybody, or are you just going to walk along? With no, them? just walk along. Okay, yeah, all right. Pretty much. The... Now, the slime blower, did it have different kinds of slime, or was it... It's just positively charged slime, so okay. it, it really just kind of counteracts any negative ectoplasmic entities yeah. or calms people down. Um, as you guys are walking, you guys are kind of walking along beside, mm -hmm. and Steve's like, Hey, Lord, it's not so tight. Oh, how? Let go. <laughs> He's not paying any attention. You guys look. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Okay. Uh, as you look, you see what looks like. First, you think it's a form, like a, a person mm -hmm. holding on to Steve's shoulder and kind of gripping. What it is, is a coat rack with a trench coat on it. The trench coat has its sleeve up. And the, on the end of the sleeve is basically like one of those, oh, like the grabbers that the old people have. Oh, yeah. And it's grabbing onto Steve's shoulder. And he's like, hey, not so tight. Boris, ow. <laughs> the, the coat rack, the top of the coat rack has a stocking cap mm -hmm. that's kind of tilted back and a pair of ski goggles and a scarf. And and the scarf is parted and it, it's like animated. Yeah. So as the ski goggles move forward, they actually narrow and the stocking cap gets like pointed down the middle so it looks like the angry eyebrows and the scarf like the, where it's wrapped around twice that gap kind of turns up as it's grabbing Steve 
<laughs> and as it's walking, you notice the bottom of the coat rack has like galoshes. So it's kind of doing the walking thing. And the, the coat rack arms are in the sleeves and it's also got two hooks. Two of the arms that are coming out of its back so they look like hooks. <laughs> like a scorpion. And this thing is walking along with Steve. And he's like, stop it. And you're like, so you're going to shoot it? Okay. Right. Yeah. Squirt it with the slime. See if that oh, does. squirt it with the slime. Got it. Yeah. All right. So go ahead and roll your moves. Uh, 16. Okay. That's probably got it. Okay. So you let loose with the slime blower, and it hits this figure. Mm -hmm. And Steve's like, hey, hey. And he sees you shooting, and he's like, um. <laughs> <laughs> you see the coat rack kind of let go of Steve, kind of yeah. move back. And it's just getting gooped with slime. As it does, you notice that the animation of it, as it kind of like, ah, silently, it just kind of goes limp, and the coat rack falls over, and everything falls on the floor, just coated in slime. Okay. Well, it doesn't seem to move. We guys shoot him back there. Yeah, you hear, you can hear the slime blower going, and <laughs> smell it. You're like, oh, okay. I kind of grab Sterling's shoulder and hold, hold on. Look back. What's happening? I got it. Did you sneeze? You, sneeze you got what? Door. Yeah, I'm sure I had a straight for the door. You or at least, it, I, I may have, if, if, did you stop? I, I grabbed your shoulder like Well, you, you had your hand on my shoulder. Right, but I, I, mean, I, I... Did you stop? Yes. Okay, well, if any of that tug, you know, I stopped in my tracks, but I'm still focusing okay. on, on the light. I said, yeah, what I are you guys to, doing back there? I say to you, hold up a second. I okay. turn back and look. And you say, see what, what looks like a an old two-door wardrobe mm -hmm. chest. It's just leaning up against a, a pile of stuff. Tricycles and an old cooler. An old 1950s refrigerator. Uh, there's a couple tires. <laughs> You're like, okay. But it's just leaning up. And it looks like inside is the light. And you know where the seam is. Mm -hmm. And like the keyhole. I mean, that's what's really bright. So there's some big light coming from inside that closet. Okay. Uh, lift, lift my goggles. Uh, lift the, the goggles and it looks like... Not? Huh? Do I see the light as I yeah. lift my goggles? Yeah, but when you lift the goggles, it looks like... Just imagine a kid who's hiding in the wardrobe mm -hmm. with one of those, like, pen lights from the 80s. Mm -hmm. So it's it's got the light, but it's no... You know, mm -hmm. If you weren't looking for it, you might even miss it. It's a kid hiding in a wardrobe with a little pen light. But when you put the goggles on, it's like, <laughs> like, you know, mm. the Ark of the Covenant kind of light. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, basically, you see that. Uh, you turn around, you're like, I got it. What'd you say? Or you what? just turned around yeah, to see what Yeah, I was like, what's did? going on? Okay. Well, that pile of stuff was grabbing Steve. And it didn't seem very friendly, so I slimed it. He's talking to you, right. saying that. Natasha's standing next to him, looking at you. Steve's looking down at a pile of goop with some stuff in it. As you're looking at Boris, and Serling's looking the same way Boris is, as you're looking at it, and he's like, oh, it was just a pile of stuff. You see something behind him. Behind and who? It's behind Boris, yeah. and it's doing that, you see a shape mm -hmm. kind of rise up. <laughs> and he's 5'6", and this thing comes up to about 7 feet tall. And you're like, uh... Boris, 12 o'clock! <laughs> uh, as you see it, with, through your ecto goggles, you mm -hmm. can see this. Uh, basically, it has... There's a big teddy bear. Oh, right. it's so well, cute! The big teddy bear is like the head. Mm -hmm. And then there's a, a huge tarp that's kind of wrapped around the body. Mm -hmm. So it's like a big cloak. Uh, you notice it has what looks like Tonka trucks all put together for arms oh, and it ends in the big like, uh, earth mover scoops no. and they're doing like this kind of thing the teddy bear has flashlights in its eyes and it looks like they just stuffed them so they're poking out Oh god! and it's kind of looking down and it's like the flashlights kind of flicker on and look at Boris and the body looks like it's probably <laughs> <laughs> the body looks like it's made of an old upright bass or a cello 
or okay. something. And it also has an accordion. <laughs> like there's the cello with the accordion on top. That's what the bear's sitting on. Right. The tarp is wrapped <clears throat> around the bear. It's got the Tonka trucks with the pile mover or earth movers for hands. And for the legs, you really can't tell what they are because it's coming up from a pile of clothes. Mm -hmm. And as it comes up, there's like socks falling off of it and a shoe plops out. And it's like all the inside, like as you see, the, the, the instruments are getting wrapped in like t-shirts and jeans. So it's getting like a, a, a skin, body. Kind of, yeah. And as it kind of comes up and you're like, 12 o'clock, you hear the accordion. <laughs> <laughs> and it just oh, kind of looms over. Okay? So, we'll go into what we call rounds. So, <laughs> who has the highest moves? Five. Three. 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 I don't know. Your moves? Oh, five. Five. Steve has... 86. <laughs> Steve has a three. So, and this thing... Okay. So yeah, 12 o'clock, you turn around and you see that thing kind of looming over you, seven mm -hmm. feet tall. What are you going to do? Um, well, I already had the wand in my hand. So slime blower? Slime blower. Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead and roll. Okay. Eight. 14. 14? Okay. Make some more room there, boy. Keep taking the toys away. Okay. Oh, Here you go. No. You hit it with the slime right in the chest, and you notice all those clothes that just kind of formed got slimed. They fall off and just splatter onto the ground. And you see more clothes kind of inching their way up, making a new skin. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of ah, the the teddy bear's mouth opens. Like it's all ripped and it opens and like the stuffing is falling out. And as it does, you see maybe a cockroach crawl up its head. And it's like, ah! So everybody has threes pretty much. Well, she oh, has five. You, you have five. five. Okay, so what are you going to do? You see that thing right behind you guys. I'm going to shoot at it. Proton pack? Yeah. Go ahead. All right, so you're going to need five dice. Still use the white one for all of them. All of them. Yeah. Add it all together. Sterling, roll Sterling. your four, four, three, three. Uh, so target number eight. is going to be... 18. Yeah, target number will be nine. Eight, 18. 18. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. <clears throat> I get 12 with a ghost. Uh-oh. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. But you made Six. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. So basically, you're standing there looking at the store while this is going on behind you, yeah. and you're like, I know there's something bad behind me. There's got to be something interesting behind that door. It's got to be. I, I hope you guys take care of that. <laughs> um, you're not going to try and break free of Jackrabbit's grip or anything, mm -hmm. but yeah, you're, you're supremely interested in what's behind that door, and you have a feeling that whatever this thing is, is trying to stop you from getting to that door. Mm -hmm. Okay, back with you guys. Uh, so you hit it with the slime, it grew a new skin, so to speak. You hit it with the proton pack, and it seemed to reel quite a bit. Um, Steve instantly pulls out his PK meter, starts scanning it, and you hear a beep beep, and he's like, Hey, the software updated. It's a poltergeist of some kind. A uh, poltergeist? Go or guardian spirit. So it's trying to protect or stop us from doing something. A guardian spirit? That's a little odd. So We're coming, peace! According to Tobin's spirit guide, they usually guard or protect something from, I don't know, their doorways or, or you know, stop people from going where they're not supposed to go. Well, this closet is definitely uh, classifies as a doorway. Um... The thing kind of reels back and then kind of starts moving in again. Looks like it's going to go for Steve. So, um, you've already gone. How about us two? Uh, Steve, Steve's basically like, yeah, and it's coming at me. Hey, uh, he puts PK meter away. He's like, I'm 
I'm looking for the way out. <laughs> so he's going to basically try and dodge this thing. But you have the same moves. What do you do? You want to do something um, to interrupt it, or what are you planning on doing? I mean, if you want to shoot it, you'll shoot it before it gets to Steve. Is what I'm saying. To keep it off of Steve, I'll shoot at it. Yeah. Is that what you want to do? Yep. Okay. So go ahead and roll. Nineteen. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, this thing reels back, and you see it like some of the stuff starts falling apart. The, the Tonka truck, its left arm basically starts falling apart, <laughs> and it's kind of leaning back, kind of staggering back, really. And it, it seems to be trying to menace you, but it's obviously weakened, so it's just kind of backing away. Um, you know this, if you want to capture this ghost, is a good time to capture the ghost. Or you can just try and shoot it to oblivion or whatever you want to do. Well, I'll kind of look at Steve and be like, I'll, I'll point to the trap like... He's like, yeah, yeah, if this is what's causing this. So he, he <laughs> you do that, he's going to pull out his Neutrona wand and yep. throw a <clears throat> capture, stream. capture stream on it. Mm -hmm. And he ropes it and you throw out the trap so he... You know, as you hit it, he starts guiding. He's like, this thing's tough. Can I get some help here? I'll, I'll fire too. Okay, so you two can manage to wrangle it into the trap. And it does the, the whole thing, and you hear it kind of scream and stretch down into the trap. Steve lets off, and it... Beep, beep. And just then, that yeah. door flies open. Okay. And in your ecto-visor, you see, like, a blinding flash for a second, and then it's like... Is that another room? Like a bigger room. But it doesn't look like this. It looks like... A normal room? Not normal. Like... <laughs> like the Smithsonian. Something along that nature. There's like... There's like... Roman gladiator. You can see like a helmet and a shield and a spear on a wall behind glass with a plaque. There's maybe a painting of something. And then there's like some other glass counters with some items in it. It looks like a museum or something. It's got the big tall window that's draped. Guy has a marble floor. I think we found a back door into some sort of museum here. And as you guys all turn around, you you see that. Yeah. So is it taking the goggles? Taking oh. the goggles off. It looks like you're looking into a room, but it's dimly lit. But it's the same room. Like the doorway, the, the wardrobe opens up, but instead of a wardrobe, it's another room that's kind of maybe it's lit, by, lit by lanterns or candles at night. But in the ecto-visor, you can see it clear as day. And you do see what looks like a shadow of someone on the wall as they kind of pass, like walking through that room. You can't make it out, it's just a shadow, but somebody is moving in that room. And you, since you rolled a ghost last time, are like, yeah, we got to go. So you start moving toward the door. And it's only like 20 feet ahead of you. Yeah. That's right, guys. So certainly starts going right up toward the door. Uh, Sterling, my, wait. I put, I, I put my goggles back down. Okay. We got something here. We got to check this out. <laughs> you guys. Think somebody's in there. Roll your cools. Target number of, target number 14 now that you see this thing. Yeah, so two dice, one of them the ghost die. Now, what's your. What's the target number? Oh, 14. Uh, I got 11. My. No dice, no ghost. Talent for cool is under pressure. Is that. I have survival, does that count? No. Survival doesn't count. Under pressure. Yeah, I would allow that, given the circumstances. Both of them. Add them together? Yes. Okay, seven. Okay. So, uh, Jackrabbit, Natasha, and Steve did not make it, but didn't get a ghost. Mm. Okay. Yeah, no, 14, no ghost. no ghost. 14, no ghost. Okay, you made it. We're like, yeah, good idea. <laughs> we'll start following Sterling. Okay. You rolled a 14, you're kind of like, yeah, it's a good idea, but are we sure we want to do this right now? Should we do? Should we? But they're all headed, and you're like, is kind of a once chance thing, so you're kind of on the fence about it. 
Yeah. But everybody else seems to be like, yeah, we better check this out. So they're going through the portal. All right. I'm kind of backing towards it, I guess, since okay. everything had come up from behind us. Right. I'm looking to see if there's anything else. Doesn't seem like there's any other movement or anything like that yet that you okay. notice, but nothing's coming at you right now. Yeah. So you're the first one through. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. One, two, three, four. We're going to have some more. more. Okay. First it's you, then it's you, then it's you, then it's Steve, then it's you. So you're going to enter through, you're going to come out, you're going to come out, and you're going to come out in this museum room. And uh, as you step through, you're kind of looking around, and you are in what looks like a museum. Um, I'm going to double check it. What was the door or whatever that we just entered through from this side? As you turn around and look, it's a painting of a wardrobe closet. Huh. And it's kind of like one of those that goes... It's, all the way to the floor and it's yeah. set up to look like but it's just a painting hmm. okay well keeping the visors on get my pka mirror and... yeah. okay oh, me. you hear someone like um stop okay and then you hear another voice immediately say it's all right it's all right i think i know what's going on i think i know exactly what happened here and you hear another voice say, Well, I, I can't believe it. I think you're right. Oh, again. And as you see coming around the corner, you see three figures approaching you. First of all, make a brains check. Target number of... The first one is going to be target number of five. Then I want you to make another one target number of yes. nine. So... so. Three dice. <laughs> got the first one, didn't get the second one. Okay. Well, oh, wait, no, I did get the second one. Two you got both? Nine and a ghost. Yeah, Ooh, got, you both. got both. Got nine and a ghost yeah. on the first got, one. Got both my ghosts. Both no ghosts? Got it, but a ghost on the first uh, one? Six and a ghost. On the second one. Okay. I had <coughs> two for the first one. Okay. <coughs> and five for the second one. Okay. <coughs> Well, as you come through, uh, the first thing you notice, if you made your first roll, Steve is not here. Oh, shit. But he came through the portal. Right. Steve is not here with you. The second thing you notice, and this is be right before you hear the voices, you're looking, there's like the Roman gladiator stuff, like I said, behind glass. There's the paintings. There's like some other bric-a-brac and stuff. You see like a bust of Anubis. It's like really under glass it's all gold and black and beautifully carved you notice the painting is like the dogs playing poker and you're like <laughs> wait a minute that's yeah. odd and then you see next to it is the little blue boy <laughs> but instead of the little blue boy he basically looks like a chihuahua <laughs> kind of dressed the same okay you're like that's odd then you hear that voice and when you all turn coming around the corner into this room are three figures the first one is like a british bobby you know mm -hmm. blue collar blue shirt with a half cape okay. a tall helmet looks like a victorian era kind of bobby it's kind of frightening because he has the head of a doberman pincher ah. paws with thumbs behind him you see what looks like a golden mm. retriever in a deer walk a deer stalker hat and the trench coat with a Bye. pipe <laughs> and next one is uh, basically a dachshund, like a wiener dog, mm -hmm. in the tweed suit. He's got the little hand, white mustache and the Bulldog. derby. derby. Very, sh very stout, but very short arms. I mean, they have like the same kind of things. As a matter of fact, these are the two guys you see. Here, let me cover up now. These are the two guys you see with the German Shepherd. Okay. <laughs> I thought you said oh, it was Doberman Pinscher. Right. Or Doberman was... Pinscher, I'm sorry. Yeah. Doberman Pinscher. Yeah. So these are the, the two characters they have just in, encountered. Can you see that okay? Yep. Okay. So they just walked <laughs> into the room. Uh, the golden retriever with the pipe is like, well, of course I'm right. It's elementary. Yeah. Obviously. Uh, uh, obviously. Sherlock's, Sherlock Spaniel, I presume. 
Did you say that? Yes. Like, no, my good sir, I'm Sherlock Bones. <laughs> this is my, Check. This is my companion, Dr. Doxon. <laughs> he says, I don't think they speak our language, Sherlock. That's unusual, isn't it? He's like, well, not if my theory is correct. I believe you came here from that painting, did you not? Yes, we did. Well, yes and no. The wardrobe was through it, anyway. I see, I There's see. There's a dimension on the other side of it. Yes, yes, I thought there was something odd about this painting. Uh, Where's painting? Steve? Not you. Steve? Steve. Steve! We oh. lost a companion. The, the Doberman is kind of like, uh, do you know these gentlemen, sir? And he's like, well, no, 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 they're, they're visitors, but I half expected them to arrive, depending on what's going on. Uh, no, no, but uh, I will vouch for them. They're with me I, at the moment. He's like, well, maybe I should get Inspector Lestrade. He's like, you can if you wish. I don't know how he can help. The Doberman's like, well, I'll get him anyway, sir. I'll be right back. And he kind of hustles off around the corner, kind of gives you the eye. <laughs> You notice it's a Doberman. Right. So he's got the little snarl and everything. And when they talk, they talk like normal. But Sherlock Bones is basically... Sherlock Bones. Is basically like... So I'm guessing that the veil between this dimension is suddenly weakened. That's probably why you're here. My theory is correct. Um, came through mostly by happenstance. Aha. I believe this has to do with these... The theft of the book, Doxon. <laughs> Doxon is like, well, by Rover, you're right. So <laughs> like, you're right. Well, then. You're right, Bones. I believe this could be. Surely this isn't happening. And he's like, well, if we're not careful, I believe it's well underway. You said you had a companion with you that is missing. Steve, yes, yes our uh, hmm. leader, ish. Hmm. I wonder. I I bet they've started their ritual, and that's what caused interference and separated him from you. What? Well, there's no I... time to lose. We must find them. Doc is like, what, what about? <laughs> We're going with you. What? Bones is like, yes, yes. You're going to have to come with us. Let's go, Bones. Uh, explain on the way. Yes, yes. And as he turns, you see another character come in. I'm trying to reveal these. I should have drawn them on separate papers. <laughs> okay. <coughs> so, you are going to see a new character pop in. That guy there. The little French bulldog. Yeah. He right. basically comes in. He's probably <coughs> shorter than you are, Boris. He's like 5'4". Yeah. Okay, there's that guy. Can you see him okay? Yep. Okay. He comes in, he's like, Sherlock, what's the meaning of this? Who are, who are these people? What are these people? And he's like, what, what's, what, what, what is who? wrong with them? They, they're like, they're, they're hairless and, and pink. And no uh, snouts. Were they ape cousins? Apes? Don't worry. Everything here smells like We're, we're not going to try to date your daughter. Well, I should certainly hope not. Um... Sherlock is like, these folks are with me and Doxon Lestrade. You go about you know, dusting for prints or whatever it is you're doing. We're going to go investigate the actual happenings that I told you about earlier that you refuse to believe. He's like, but that, that, that's preposterous. This, that. Yes, and we're not. The Doberman kind of says, we have a point, sir. And he's like, Ugh. Sherlock is like, yes. I told you there were strange happenings occurring, and this is one that I was expecting. A dimensional portal has been opened, and I believe they're trying to contact the ancestor spirit of Genghis Canine. I told you that. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, like <laughs> we need a we need a soundboard so bad. Wow. Like, ah. He's like, and and, and you suppose your arch enemy is out is responsible for this? And he's like, yes, yes, I do. Uh, we're late. Uh, I believe this is getting worse. We need to find him now. And he's like, well, how do you know he was involved in this kind of thing? Uh, I thought you said it was this other... He's like, well, he is probably the one who wants it, but if I know my arch nemesis, he is trying to help him. 
to gain power himself. And go ahead and everybody roll brains. Target number of nine. Wow, I actually got it. I got it. Eleven. Okay. Uh, no. Yep. Four. Thirteen. Okay. All right. Uh, as you guys are kind of like looking at this and realizing that everything in the museum is like made for dogs. dogs. And like, you know, you're like, oh, all the, hey, there's the Mona Lisa. She's a Cocker Spaniel. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, some of you are looking around, and as you kind of look down, you notice they're, they've got paws. Mm -hmm. they're, they're walking on two legs, no shoes. And as you look, you see what looks like the couple petals of a blue flower. It looks like, um, like a carnation kind of thing. Maybe a little mm -hmm. bit bigger, but there's like a couple of the petals are laying on the ground still connected to part of the flower. And just as you guys look down, Dachshund's like, Bones, look at look at that. What do you, you think this is a clue? And he's like, hmm, a blue clue. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, I'm done. There's... I'm gonna punch you. Wow. <laughs> I swear to God. It's Ghostbusters, come on. It's wonderful. It's <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> Did you say your friend missing was Steve? Did he have a green stripe? Oh, shit! <laughs> Sorry. 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 Funny. Sherlock looks it up and he's like, that is the carnation he always wears. It was given to him by his mother. Yes. <clears throat> Maury Barkety is definitely responsible for that. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> he says, yes, yes. In the theft of the book, I know, I know what they're doing now. They're trying to summon the ancestor of the spirit of Genghis Canine. <laughs> we, we must go. And he's like, well, I have a carriage waiting downstairs, Sherlock. And he's like, good, good man. Uh, follow us. We'll explain follow, on the way. Follow on. So, I, right? You guys kind of brush past Lestrade and the, the Bobby, and they're just like, should I? He's like, just, just let him go. I don't even know what's going on, and I know he'll say something about that. So just let him go. If he can solve it, great. Meanwhile, we have an actual theft to solve. Let's see if we can figure that part out. So they kind of go about their business. You guys move on down the halls. As you're going down the halls, you see all kinds of famous artifacts that you know from your world, but they're all, like, dog-related, you know? And you're like, oh, my, this is very interesting. <laughs> this is interesting. wonderful. Yeah. So uh, you do notice the restrooms are off to the side, and it's got the, the guys and the girls' dogs. You're like... <laughs> You don't know if you want to go in there or not. Just, As you walk. There's just a fire hydrant or two on the wall. A <laughs> couple posts. A couple posts. <laughs> so as you guys walk, uh, Sherlock Bones tells you that there has been a theft. He's like, yes, yes. Uh, I believe an arch nemesis of mine, a mastermind criminal named Mori Barkady, has stolen the Necronomnomicon. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. Wow. The Necronomnomicon. It was written by the Mad Cat Abdul Al Hazred. <laughs> translated by H.P. Lovecat. <laughs> I'm not sure this is so <laughs> Priceless man, priceless man. <laughs> he, says, um, he says, yes, the. Wow. <laughs> Uh, written by the feline races and bizarre funerary incantations and burial rites and things of that supernatural nature. That like balls of string? Bring about the... Oh, who knows what... The feline Gordian knot. Says, well, who knows That'd about that culture? Ask. I don't know. <laughs> Unfortunately, they're not around to ask. Not around here, anyway. Uh, the felines are on a different continent. There are no cats in London. Oh, we're in London? Yes, London. Well, That's still the United normal. Kingdom. Yes, okay. Yes. Um, where, where do the cats live? Uh, on a continent across the ocean. There are no cats here. Right, what's the name of the continent? Cathay. <laughs> <laughs> and Dachshund's like, yes, no cats in London. Oh. Oh, God. Dogs and cats living together? That'd be a mass hysteria. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
I assume some of them are probably in Castlevania. Oh, yes. Yes, probably. Or the Catskills. <laughs> I've never heard of that. It's in our place. Never mind. Oh, okay. All right. Well, anyway, I do believe there is a another villain who's trying to bring about the spirit of Genghis Canine for more power. It's Fu Man Chow. <laughs> Of course! Of course! <laughs> he says, I believe they are in league to bring about this, this spirit so they can gain the power. Of extraordinary canine! Or reclaim his Mongolian empire <laughs> through him. What? He go, we, he's trying to bring about... I know Fu Manchao is trying to resurrect Genghis Canine to bring about his spirit to reclaim the Mongolian empire with his assistance oh. and rule over... The territories that he once ruled, which obviously are not in his hands anymore. And if I know Murray Barkety, he's probably wanting to ride on those coattails. Or tails. Either way. <laughs> and I believe that the ritual they're preparing has weakened the dimensional wall. And I noticed something odd about that painting myself. It was painted by a man named Ivo Shandor in our world. I don't know... I'm <laughs> just like, oh crap. He was here too? I don't know. I assume so. He is a mysterious We're figure lost to the pages of time. We have some dealings with that in our dimension as well. I see. That is probably the link between our worlds. Hmm. And I well, why would they take Steve? Well, I believe that if the ritual's happening, uh, whatever trans-dimensional gateway has brought well, you here has probably, need a sacrifice. probably been interrupted by this ritual. It's very possible that your companion is... Got zapped or wherever they're doing the ritual rather than coming here. I'm deducing. I'm hoping he is not lost to the dimensional warps. But if I'm right, and Dachshund's like, you always are, Sherlock. He's like, I believe he's probably with them now. Which means he may be in great peril, your friend. I'm sure of it. And as far as that goes, our world may be in great peril if they succeed in this endeavor. Well, then we need to stop them. This blue carnation tells me that Mori Barkady is definitely involved, so I know kind of what we're dealing with. I just need to find out where he is, and I have no idea how to track him. Wait, you don't know how to track him? He's a very clever criminal. He would cover his tracks easily, hmm. and therein lies the problem. The game is afoot, so they speak. And I intend to find him, but it has always been trouble with him. It has always been tough. Uh, I don't know if you caught it when the when we saw the flower petals when we first saw them. Mm -hmm. I had oh yeah, flipped you down it. the goggles. Did, uh, was there anything? Not really. And you no. notice when you flip down your ecto goggles here, like mm -hmm. the glow and all that. It's not. It's like oh, there's no there's no ghosts around here. <laughs> You're like okay. You're in a different dimension, but nothing here is haunted. Right. So, and as you look at the petals, it's just... Okay. Yeah. Having survival, would that include tracking? Um, it could. Physical tracking, if he right. like, walks somewhere. Everybody make a brains check. Target number of... I'll make it... Nine. If you want to spend brownie points, don't forget, you can always do that. <coughs> Fourteen. Sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah, yeah. I got, got two and a ghost. Two and a ghost, okay. Uh, that's a big six. point. That's a big oh, point. that's a toasty. Anybody else? <laughs> two left. <laughs> Ghostbusters International, brought to you by Wait. Twinkie. Uh, I'll save it for later. Um, those of you who may, you rolled a two with a ghost? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... And what was target number? Nine. Oh, uh, no. No ghost, though? No ghost. Okay. You're kind of figuring, you're, I don't know how we're going to track him. You're pretty much like, you know what? This is a dog world. We go around and just sniff people's butts. It should lead us in the right direction, because that's how they all know each other. <laughs> who, is this the person who rolled a ghost? Yeah. yeah. Two Me. and a ghost. So he failed miserably. Oh, God. And we go. So you're kind of thinking, if we either... So we could either smell everybody's butts, or if we pee on stuff, we might be able to please? find out. Or not orange, I meant... Pretty ectovisors right. where he is. I would say. Which is totally wrong. 
You too, maybe. I, I had an alternate yeah. suggestion. Smell the carnation. You guys know. And I think you did this in the last cross, crank ice crossover. You can track each other's PKE meters by locking on to the frequency. Oh, Steve yeah, that's right. That. Yeah. Steve's got a PKE meter. And on. he has a PKE yep. meter. So Select you can actually. For Steve. <laughs> yeah. All you got to do is look for the frequencies of your PKE meters and have everybody turn theirs off. Because otherwise you're going to be like, yep, you're right there. Yep, you're there. Yep, you're there. Okay. That's all I can get. So if everybody turns their PKE meters off, but one guy yeah. calibrates it. Okay. Mine's on. Turn your guesses off. So certainly I don't have any, PKA. so it's easy for me. I didn't have one either. So I think I had one. You have one, so you'll have to. But mine's okay. off. He's a ways away, but not overly far. He's probably within within fifty miles. Well, with uh, Sherlock, and within probably headed northeast. Within fifty miles, headed northeast. That way. Sherlock is kind of like most amazing. And he's like, man, I see that. We use it uh, mostly to uh, track ghosts. Well, th this is the PK. <laughs> to de de detect ghosts. Mm. Uh, but uh, it's a nice little piece of uh, hardware. Uh, but we're also able to uh, select out and check for our other units of it. Oh, interesting. So we can track each other. Hmm. Dachshund's like... Look at that. Sherlock, it's an electronic butt sniffing device. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Sherlock's like, no, 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 it's much more complicated than that. Very interesting. Very interesting. And the things on your back, I assume, are for. Shooting ghosts. So you are paranormal investigators. No, we're Ghostbusters. Yes. Ghostbusters. Interesting. We uh, 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 specialize in paranormal eliminations and detections. Very, very unusual. Doc's is like, you're oh, reminding me. I hand him a card. <laughs> okay. He's, he takes it and he's like, hmm, well, thank you. Let's turn it in our world. Mm. If you ever visit our dimension, stop by and say hi. Doc's is like, we have oh, treats. This reminds me, they should have been with us on that case. Holmes, that one case we were at in Baskerville. Was that? The, the humans of Baskerville? No, no, no. The, um, no, no. It was the. The feline of Baskerville, wasn't it, wasn't it something like that? He's like, oh yes, it ended up being the cat. Mm-hmm, yes. Posing as a dog, which was horrible. <laughs> horrible. Was his name Heathcliff? No, but he was on the molars. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Or less. He says, well, northeast, 50 miles. And then 50 miles. Keep going this way. There is that farmhouse that I passed earlier this week. Remember, Doxon? I thought there was something odd about it. But I didn't have time to investigate. I bet my hunch was correct. I bet that's where they are. Doxon's like, well, what are we waiting for? I've got a carriage right there. He's like, yes, yes, get in the carriage and head that way, gentlemen. Okay. Who's guys... pulling the carriage? <laughs> uh, horses. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's like Planet of the Apes. The horses are still horses. <laughs> so basically, you guys walk out on the street. There's like all kinds of people <laughs> uh. about. Um, you see probably a chimney sweep walking by who looks like uh, a black lab, but he's just covered in soot. Mm -hmm. And he's just kind of evening governor. Uh, you also see probably an old man kind of hobbling by. And it's a bloodhound, so he's got a big say. He's like, oh, go, good evening, sir. Good evening. <laughs> Uh, you like, see all kinds oh, of people about. Uh, you do see across the street, you see a red light on a porch. Mm -hmm. And nearby, you actually see, like, at first from behind, a very voluptuous woman, you expect, wearing the dress, curly, bleach blonde hair. And as she turns around, it's a French poodle. <laughs> and you're like, uh, yeah. Yeah. does anybody have the goal sex? No. no. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> but you see all kinds of characters. Those are puppies. <laughs> British characters, but they all dogs. Uh, the coachman is up there, and he's probably just a mutt. You know, <laughs> get the big bushy mustache. Where to, sir? He's like, oh, 
gives directions. Uh, northeast, take the take the main road uh, out to the country tra country lane. He's like, oh, very good, sir, very good. Get in, all that. The carriage is like a, an old stagecoach carriage of Victorian era, no windows, just curtains. Right. He's like, up, up, up. As you all get in, you notice Sherlock and Dachshund automatically put their heads out the window. <laughs> Like, <laughs> and as you see carriages going by, everybody in the carriages is like heads out the window. I'm not, well in Rome. <laughs> yeah, Docs and Goose kind of looks at you and nods. Don't frighten the children, Doc. And yeah, as you pass, they're like you probably see a woman and her puppy just kind of like, oh my god. <laughs> Sherlock's like, oh yes, yes, I have a better idea. Um. Stop by 221B Baker Street, please. He's like, or Barker Street. He's going to say, what's Barker, Barker Street? Street. Yeah. He's like, yes, yes. So he pulls up and you see the little brownstone and all that. He's like, oh, quickly come inside. I, I have an idea. I mean, yeah. It's not going to be perfect, but for traveling the rest of the way, it might help. And he oh, comes no. upstairs and he's like, all right. You, you see his landlady. He's like, who do you have now? Oh, my. He's like, please step back inside. You know, blah, blah, blah. He takes you upstairs. He unfolds, like, he gets, sits down, there's, like, the theater mirror with the light bulbs around it, and he's like, yes, yes, well, i got a lot of practice at this. This is going to be tough, but I do know a bit about disguise, so <laughs> well, let's try this. And oh, my he God. basically sits down. Uh, let's see. Now, for all of you that are watching, if you go to the Amazon wish list, prior to all of this, there were dog, dog masks <laughs> in dog the wish mask. list. If we had them, we could be putting them on right now. Huh. Um, okay. Or not. Ben, if you're Latex. watching, I need you to roll well, yeah, that's part of it. a ghost die, which means roll a six-sider and let me know if, if the six pops up. But how Unless, by chance, you have one. a ghost die. Number one. Hmm? One. No, oh, Ben. What? Oh, Ben. Oh, Ben, Ben. Yeah. Ben, you still there, buddy? Come on, chow. Yeah, Ben's still there. Okay. Roll that ghost die, pal. Maybe. Turned it off after shock bones and doctor. Okay, got a six. <laughs> got a six. Okay. Roll again. Okay. Uh oh. Alright. Roll one more. Roll again. Dun, 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 dun. Four. Okay, uh, two more times. <laughs> Pure pattern of little puppy feet. Okay, thank you, Ben. Good. Thanks, Ben. Thank you, Ben. So that was for the costuming. Uh, <laughs> Sherlock has a brains of six, and he was making costumes for all of you. And one of them, he succeed. He succeeded on all, but one of them got a ghost. So give me just a second here. <laughs> one. One Mississippi. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, so one, two, three, four, um, four. Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it was the first one he rolled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So who? Well, was... yes. Well, that was it. I said ran, random as to which one the rolls were going to go for. Yeah. Do you guys have ten siders with you? Anybody have? Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> I have to dig them out, but okay. How many do you need? How many? Just roll percentile. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, who's next? Oh. Uh, Sixty-two. Sixty-two. Okay. Who's next? Uh. -oh. Mine should be easy to get to, but okay. 
O2 for Rhonda. Right. Okay. And 45 for me. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> Rhonda. Yes. He has disguised you. He's taken your blue hair, put it up in a top knot, does the makeup to look like a dog. Looks really, really well done. He's um, a blue chick. You look a lot. <laughs> you, you look a lot like a Shih Tzu with the little top tail. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, that that's passable. I mean, if somebody came up to you, they'd know it's a costume. But from a distance, they might not freak out as bad. Uh, let's see, <laughs> Serling, uh, you've got kind of long Rabies. whiskers, big eyebrows that kind of drape down. Uh, he's got you get some pointed ears, a little mustache. You look uh, a lot like a Yorkie. <laughs> and it looks pretty good. So Yorkshire Terrier for you. Um, okay. yeah. <laughs> no. Shit, I can't even see it. Oh, okay, yeah. So for Boris, you've got like the long white mustache and goatee kind of dark around your eyes uh kind of elongating your face a little bit and you're starting to look like a schnauzer yeah <laughs> did a pretty good job okay and jack jack got the ghost <laughs> yes <laughs> okay <laughs> do you remember the world's ugliest dog competition yes <laughs> You kind of look like, well, let's see here. <laughs> the Mexican hairless. Oh, well. No, just imagine you look like, it was kind of intimidating at first. You look like a husky. Okay. But your nose, your snout is way short, almost like a, a not quite a bulldog, but more like a Pomeranian. <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, you also have like the teeth been set right. So you're snaggled too. You're you've got like one tusk up and two fangs down and it kinda makes you drool a little bit. Yeah, it seems like you want messed up looking the glue look. for where you put your eyebrows on kind of kind of eyes. ran. So yeah. you've got kind of this kind of eye going. Uh, messed up looking mic. This is wonderful. <laughs> I mean, it's actually a pretty good Disguise, it's just. <laughs> it like a fucking you're like the Quasimodo dog. It's <laughs> Eon <on> Crack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice you got <laughs> I used to be a drug dog. I used to be a drug dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, most of the costumes look good. They're all going to be passable. Yours might still frighten Mine's questionable. little children. Yeah. But yeah. So, he gets y'all made up. So, you look like. He's like, I can't do anything for your clothes. So you basically look like Ghostbusters. He gives you pairs of gloves to wear. Unless well, you had your gloves. Own, yeah. That way you can hide your paws. And uh, the boots, he's like, we'll just say you're from Europe. It's okay. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> you are all disguised as dog breeds right now. <laughs> um, he gets yeah. back out and get back in the carriage and you continue on. And this time, as people drive by, they just kind of... Hmm, interesting wave, that kind of thing. <laughs> or look at Jack and... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you walk out, that woman with her puppies walking by, and they're like, oh, that's worse. <laughs> <laughs> um, following your PKA meter, mm. you can basically travel this road a little out of London, and you start getting into some of the cottages, and, and then you're out onto the country lane. At one point, the country lane kind of forks, and it Sherlock's like, blast it. For the one time, I don't remember if it's left or right. I'm going to have to ask directions. Excuse me, sir. And you see, like, a farmer out there, and he turns out it's an English sheepdog with a big... <laughs> here, sir, sure, what can I do for you? He's like, oh, there was a farmhouse not far from here, and he describes it. It's a large, large kind of a barn structure, very run down, but uh, had fence around it, uh, very dilapidated, and uh, had a house next to it that looked like it was in a bit of disrepair. And he's like, oh, you mean... In the old Holstead restaurant, uh, the residence. Yes, it's up there, on the left there. Just keep going. He's like, yes, have you seen any activity or anything around there? He's like, nope, nope, it's haunted. I don't go there. He's like, it's haunted. He's like, well, that's what they say. And I'm not taking a chance. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, 
um, Sherlock Bones, oh, you, you have consultants? He's like, oh, yes, they're actually paranormal investigators. We're looking for ghosts. He's like, oh, well, you'll find them up there, is what I hear tell. Right up that way. He's like, yes. Give me a card. There you are. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. The Ghostbusters, this stupid name, but all right. <laughs> he's like, come on, driver. And the guy just snaps, and you got to head on up. And he's like, all right, well, we're out of town. If you want to take your costumes off, I don't think you'll need them, but unless you feel you No, know. I'm, I'm ditching this shit. I'm done. <laughs> Keep like, mine on. I understand. <laughs> he's like, all right. So as you ride up, uh, off in the distance, you see you're cresting a hill, and you can see this old big barn structure mm -hmm. with some fencing around it. And he's like, yes, this is the place. I believe this is where they're holding that. that That's ritual. where the PKA meter is. As you look, you're like, that is exactly where we're going. He's like, yes, well, he's liable to have henchmen or something with him, and who knows what all. But if, uh, Could it be a pack? We're doing... You know, yes, it, could be. it could be. And it could be, if they're in the process of the ritual, we might have an easy time of getting in, but we'll have to hurry. If they haven't started the ritual yet. They might be a little more wary, but we should be able to sneak in and take them by surprise if you fellows or you ladies are up to that. Sounds like a plan Let's to me. Go. All right. Let's go. He's like, driver, stop here. So he stops the carriage and lets you guys out a ways down the road. And he's like, well, let's, let's hurry up there. So you guys kind of move on up. Um, as you get to this big barn structure, you can kind of see some light coming through some of the doors and the cracks in the walls. Is it, there's somebody in there, all right? Yeah. Lights through the cracks of the door. Yep, this, we, yep. got, we so got a theme going on yep. here. <laughs> Is there any kind of windows or anything on the upper? Yes, there are. Mostly the windows are up high to let light in. Yeah. Um, there's the big front double doors for the barn doors. Uh, there's probably a small side door. And then there's stacks of, like, sacks of grain or bales of hay around the building, too, that you might be able to get up to to get through those windows. Oh, I'm yeah, you, sure. Yeah, you can. probably don't need to, but for the normal folk. <laughs> yeah, for you the could probably vertically, climb, ch yeah, vertically you, challenged folk You can here. climb up on those you and probably get through those windows, or at least look inside. You're 5'11", I'm only 5'6". Oh, well, okay. Yeah. So, basically, as you guys get up to the building, um, you do hear... It sounds like maybe some. Somebody new... needs to be a corgi. <laughs> a corgi? Yeah, that's, that's awesome. what Ben said. Okay. Wish granted, Ben. Ben's the corgi. Oh, Ben's the... Yeah. Uh, basically, as you uh, kind of come up, you can hear some movement inside. You also hear what sounds like voices, but you can't quite make them out. So once you get up to the building, uh, how are you going to approach? Who's going where? Ooh. I'm going up. I'm going up to the mm -hmm. the windows up top? Yeah. Okay. How about you guys? No, uh, there's windows lower down on the first level. There's maybe a couple, uh, but they're kind of shuttered, but you might be able to see through once you get up there. But they're mm -hmm. they're shuttered right now, but you know, mm -hmm. these are all like slat boards, so you might yeah. be able to mm -hmm. peek inside. Yeah, definitely, definitely do the peek. So you're gonna do that? I think I'm gonna follow Boris. Climb up the bales of hay and stuff to get up to the windows. Yep. Um, I'm probably going to go with Surly, actually, and see if we can find something around the perimeter. Okay. Um, Sherlock is going to go to the side door, and he tells Watson to go around the back. So, or Dachshund. So, they're going to do that. So, <laughs> you get up to the window pretty easily, or very easily, obviously, and you can climb up next to him. Right. You guys are going to the same window? Yeah. I'm actually going to go with Sherlock. Correct. Right. I'll follow you Sherlock. You'll follow Sherlock? Okay. okay, so you're going to go up to the window and look through the crack. Yeah. Go up like As you guys get to the front, it is like a jar a little bit. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of like, I might be able to open this a little bit if we're quiet. And he kind of pushes and you... And he opens it just enough to where you can both see through. All right, once you get up there and everybody looks in... Uh, you'll find a crack that's easy enough. You can put your head right up against it. You don't have a snout to get in the way, so you're good. Um, <laughs> basically, you look inside and you see what looks like the center of the floor has been marked off in a big circle made of powder, flour, salt, you don't know what. But it's a, Steve's a, ashes! <laughs> it's a large circle with some runes kind of made into it. 
on the straw floor. Mm -hmm. um, it's it looks pretty much to you like some sort of summoning circle. Mm -hmm. You guys have seen this before, read about this before. It is a summoning circle of some kind. Uh, there are probably about five or six figures kind of in the shadows like there's one you can see by the front door and as you guys open that door you see the back of someone really tall i mean really tall he's probably like seven foot five and kind Jesus. of husky and it's like Ooh. wait is a husky no but he, <laughs> yeah he's not a husky he's just a husky, husky built right so anyway uh you see some people milling about the shadows and stuff uh there's probably about three or four that are around the circle and they seem to be chanting, and they're dressed in robes. Um, you do see somebody sitting at the head of the barn, back in the shadows. Like It's like on a couple bales of hay, but it looks like they've got a throne or something. Hey, and it's bro. just somebody very big sitting there with some sort of robe, but it's very shadowed, so you can't make him out. Um, he must be wearing a big headdress or something. Nearby, uh, off to the side of the circle, and there's probably a small, like a, like a brazier of fire mm -hmm. with a fire poker, and there's a guy kind of stirring the coals with the fire poker, lifts it up, and he is blowing white hot, kind of puts it back in, and he seems to be talking to someone, and that someone is okay. tied to basically a post, arms up, Legs tied is Steve. Oh, shit. <laughs> you notice that the guy yeah, who's got the fireplace poker is wearing the proton pack. And it's powered on. Mm. And on the ground next to him, near the circle, is the ghost trap. And he's got the foot pedal like right by his paw. The guy you see... Is the fellow in black right there? Mm -hmm. Looks yep. like a looks like He's a border collie. Do. He's got one blue eye, one brown eye, and that blue eye is like that real cold blue eye. And he's wearing what looks like a very nice evening tuxedo. You see that okay? I hope so. So. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. You're fine. Oh. <laughs> I just caught it out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> you hear Sherlock? It. There's Lori Barkity right there. The one with the pack on? Yes. And he's probably either tortured your friend for information on how to operate it, or he may have disturbed it himself. He's very intelligent. Well, here's the thing. If I can hit that proton pack, it'll explode and kill him. Hmm. But again, it'll, again, it'll kill Steve, too. Uh, yes. And probably everybody in the barn. And possibly us. Well, let's find a different one. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys see that, and uh, he kind of pulls up the fireplace poker, and you, you're you all close enough now. He says, so, is there a frequency, my good man? And I do mean man, because I've figured out this equipment on my own, as you well know. <laughs> now I just need to know what frequency will I need to use if there is such a setting to capture... The spirit that comes through. And Steve's like, well, there's really no setting. I don't know. And he's like, you don't know. And yet you carry this proton accelerator, this nuclear device, upon your back. But you don't know how it works. I find that very hard to believe. And he kind of points the fireplace poker at Steve. And Steve's like, well, it's not a setting. It just does it itself. I mean, it, it's it's an ectoplasmic entity. How, how tough is this entity? He's like, it's Genghis Canine. In life, he was a ruler throughout all of Europe. I would assume he's tough, but I don't know in his current state. How would you discern that? And you notice he's like genuinely asking a question. He's like, I don't know. I guess it depends on how much power he has. Interesting. So you're saying if I shoot this at him, it will weaken him and I can use it that to trap him. That is correct, isn't it? He's like, yeah, but why would you summon him to trap him? I, th I thought you wanted to summon him for, for that guy over there. Or is it guy? Is it, is it dog? Is that an offensive term to you? Is that is that like racially not acceptable? <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's 
the window open? Yeah, it's kind of got the little hinges, so it does open. You can mm -hmm. get in. Uh, your window is shuttered, but you mm -hmm. could open it, and there's no glass. It's just the shutter. So okay. all you got to do is open the shutters towards you, and you can go through. Yours, the glass panes open. You can go through. You guys already have the door open, but there's that big guy right there. So, <clears throat> okay, you should. Don't forget, you have your walkie talkies here. Yeah, um, the um, summoning circle. You said there were some sort of initiates or something about it. There's like three of them at different points. Okay. Yeah. I look around. Is there stuff to build a Bigfoot trap laying around? <laughs> There's some rope just yeah, inside the door. I'm thinking if I can snag this big dude up. He's about the size of a Bigfoot. <clears throat> Maybe. I kind of say something to Sherlock. I'm like, I, I think I might know how to get this big dude out of the way. Can you draw him out here? When I tell you to? Not before then. I can. Okay, I'm going to try to build a Bigfoot trap just outside the door. Wait. Okay, all right. Do you have invent stuff or create no, things? No, just survival and cryptozoology and all that junk. Okay. And duct tape creations. Well, it's going to be... <laughs> it's going to be a brains roll. Okay. And that's your talent? Duct tape creations? Yeah. <clears throat> For brains? Yeah. I'll allow it. He always carries duct tape with yeah. him in his, in his so, jumpsuit. So. You notice over there, there's like an old... Cart, a rain barrel, some rope. You're like, hmm. Mm. So, yeah, you can go ahead and roll your brains. Your target number is going to be 13. Is it just brains or is it with the... Oh, with the talent. With the talent. Okay. Use the talent. It's 13. If you want to use brownie points, you got to announce it before you spin. Or before you roll. I'll spend one. Spend one, so it's yep. an extra die. Your target well, number is 13. <clears throat> no ghost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh, easily 13. Okay. Uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22. 22. Yeah. Okay. So you rig up this contraption where you've got the cart is like the two wheeled cart with the hitch, so you angle it this way. Right. And you've got the rain barrel on the sitting on the edge and it's it's got a lot of heavy stuff like rainwater in it and Sherlock helps you put it on the edge where you can easily knock it off. Mm -hmm. And at the other end, you have the rope snare, and you found a pulley that goes up where they would haul up oh, the hay Oh, hay, hay bale, yeah. So you're like, throw the rope up there, get it ready. All you got to do is get this big dude to walk up that cart, kick the rain barrel off so it drops him into the snare, and it'll yank him up. You're like, this is going to work. Oh, shit. <laughs> so Sherlock just needs to draw him out, and maybe you're plan is to get him on the cart. You'll have to lure him up on the cart so Sherlock can knock that barrel off. Okay. So that's the plan. Yep. Okay. How about you guys? <laughs> I'm <clears throat> getting ready to slime the black dog. Murray, okay. Murray, Murray Barkety. Murray, yeah. Murray Barkety. Murray Barkety. Okay. Uh, how are you? He's up there with the slime blower by the window. What are you planning on doing? Who's within my range? Right now, you'd have to get inside the barn to be in range of any of these guys. Okay, then I'll move into the barn. Okay, so you're going to climb through the window inside. Mm -hmm. There's like a ledge there, and then there's ladders that go down. <clears throat> but you notice as you kind of look in, down at one end, where the ladder goes down, mm -hmm. there is a guy there. And he's human? No. No. He's stocky. He's got like big cheeks hanging down. He's really muscular, a bowler. He looks like an English bulldog. Very mm. stocky. And he's kind of up on the catwalk, right where that ladder goes down. Catwalk, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> but the ladder goes down, and it looks like he's kind of standing there on guard. Just kind of looking down at the circle. He's not looking at the windows. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to slide into position to where he doesn't see me. And see if I can help out any of the others. Okay. So, you can climb out on the catwalk and crouch down at the other end in the shadows. He might not see you, but if he does, all he's got to do is run down the catwalk towards you to get to you. Just so you know. 
or you could there's you could probably lift yourself over the railing and lower yourself up down onto some bales of hay, but you'd have to make a moves check. All right, yeah, actually, I'll I think that'd be better. So okay. I'll make a moves check. Okay. So and that is and sorry. Is, and you do have climb. I do actually five. Okay. And don't forget, I want to impress. The proton pack is for ghosts. If you shoot these guys, it will kill them, right. and you don't want to probably harm anybody like that. Right. That would be like the worst thing you can do. Besides, they will probably haunt you for eternity. <laughs> dog, so. dog spirits haunt you eternity. Yeah. Ain't no good. Human dog things. Okay. Oh, your target number is probably going to be eight. Well, that was your ghost. Yeah. You roll a ghost? Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, so you had a 16 with a ghost. 16 with a ghost. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Uh-oh. And you took your makeup off, right? Mm hmm Okay. So you sneak in, step on the catwalk, and make the little board squeak, and you're like, he's not paying attention. You kind of creep over to the railing, looking at him, kind of go over the railing, look down, there's a couple big bales of hay right there mm -hmm. and it's kind of like a tiered pyramid thing so it's only like four feet to get to it so you can hang and no, step so right I'm on it just... so you're like okay go over the rail and i'm gonna lower myself down and why am i hanging here a foot off the what your hose the proton pack ah. is hooked on the railing above you I'm and you're just like so you're just swinging <laughs> above the bales of hay <laughs> you, can't, okay. you can't reach the rail because oh, you're great. too far down. You can't reach the bales of hay. So I'm just hanging there. there. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing that but I But he have... didn't hear you. <laughs> so. Okay. Then it's a good thing I have two in radio. Yes, you do have a radio. A walkie talkie. So, uh, okay, before you do that, yeah. how about you? I'm sneaking in the window. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm going to wait up in the catwalk. I assume the catwalk up here. Uh -huh. Just hiding. <clears throat> and I'm going to wait for the ritual to start. Okay. And when it starts, click. And I'm going to shoot the circle. All that wonderful loose hay on the ground with the proton pack. Gotcha. It's going to catch on fire. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. That ought to disrupt the ritual. Yeah. All right. And you were... Basically, I'm aiming at more Barkady. Right. But if he <clears throat> gets any closer to Steve, I'm going to shoot him with slime him. Slime him. That's right. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> I'm told um, Sherlock to just start the process when he feels it's best to do so. And I'll, okay. I'll react from there. Okay, so it's going to take you a couple minutes to set that up. Right. So, yeah, we'll say by the time, Sherlock's going to help you. So you guys get your trap set up. By that time, she's already snuck in and hung herself <laughs> off the railing. So she's, At least I'm not hanging by, by jock strap. And you were stealthy about it. That's great. <laughs> she's quietly just hanging. <laughs> Got a nice view of what's going to happen down there. Just swinging in the breeze. And the only bad thing is, you know, if you pull your Neutrano wand, it's going to go zzz. And you'll fall. Yep. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> uh, okay. So you are you going in the window, or are you going to do it from the window? Because you probably have to be a little closer to get in range to slime him. Just so you know. Arc it. <laughs> um, no, if I need to move in, I'll I'll go ahead and move okay. in. That was okay. I would have done that initially. Anyway. The guy's still down there, watching. And you, you can't tell if he's snoring or if that's the way he breathes. Because he's a bulldog. <laughs> you don't, he might be asleep. You don't know. Alright. So everybody gets in a position. You start to get through the window. As you come through the window, uh, you're kind of... There's bales of hay around you and a couple crates and nail kegs. Yes. And you kind of look around. You're like, alright. And as you step forward, you see on the other side of the nail kegs is another guy standing there and he's kind of watching he's got like the the old-fashioned like button-down hat uh scarf 
ratty old jacket, fingerless gloves, kind of like a, your typical Victorian thug. thug. Yeah. Um, is he standing next to the railing? No, as you get through and it's like, there's a little space between... Here's the wall, here's the window. As you climb through, there's like bales of hay, nail kegs and crates all around here with a little opening. He's like right over here. So if you were to come out of that opening, all you'd have to do is look over and he would see you. But you could crouch down and hide here and nobody would see you yet. I'm just saying, if you went out into the warehouse, all he's got to do is look over and see you. So I'll leave that up to you. But you get in. He doesn't see you. But as you look, he looks pretty rough and tumble. Uh, <laughs> he's not very tall. And he's kind of got the dachshund thing with the short legs. The burly. Probably. Yeah, pretty burly. And as he looks, he's a corgi. And he's just kind of <laughs> eyeing There's your corgi, yeah. Ben. Yep. Ben, you're in here. You're a bad guy. Hired <laughs> thug. And he just kind of looks around and just kind of observant. He's got two TVs watching everything. <laughs> three. <laughs> three. Three. So he's probably just watching. Uh, across the way, now that you're inside, uh, and you guys can see this too, because when you get in, the front door is a little open. Um, mm -hmm. Over there is this huge guy. He's like seven he's foot a five. freaking guy. Yeah, he's a great dame. Yeah. And he's kind of standing there very impressive. He's dressed like in the the vest with the suspenders and the white tailor sh like brawler shirt with the sleeves rolled up. Uh, he's probably got a derby on, and then the slacks. Um, there's also the corgi. There's a bulldog up in the corner. You also see a guy who's probably over by the door, closer to the summoning circle. Um, and if when Serling came through the window, the corgi is here. The other guy in the middle is here, and he is really kind of big, really muscular, and he's got this huge lantern jaw. He's a Rottweiler. And then you see next to him is another one that's kind of setting down on a barrel, and he's a pit bull. <laughs> and he's got, like, the, the hat and the suspenders and the sleeveless shirt. Looks like your back backstreet brawler. Then there's the Great Dane at the door, and then across the summoning circle is Maury Barkety and Steve. There's three people with robes, people I use the term lightly, with robes kind of chanting around the circle. And then up here on that throne is the big whoever it is. So, but as you guys kind of get into position, <coughs> you hear Moriarty and, and uh, Steve kind of talking. Uh, the chanting starts to get a little more strong, and you see the one in the throne. You guys don't see this. No, we're outside. But you guys see the one in the throne kind of does this, and he's got these long sleeves with this kind of oriental design on it. Yeah. And he kind of stands and says, The time is upon us. And he walks forward into the light, and you see... <laughs> this guy <laughs> looks like a chow chow. Yeah, it's Fu Man Chow. Fu Man Chow. Yeah, right there. Down just a little bit. Fu Man Chow. Fu Man Chow. So he gets up. He's dressed just like Fu Man Chu from the old novels, but he's just got this huge puffy my, face what? and the little slinky. Hench arm. dogs. Wait, I'm what? not sure what he said here. What's that? Hench dogs? Yeah, hench dogs. These are all the hench dogs. Already. Instead then. of henchmen. So Fu Man Chow is like, the time is upon us, and he steps forward and he starts chanting too. And Fu Man Chow is the top dog. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just making sure I was reading it correctly. The, he's you like from your angle, he's probably blocked by some of the nay kegs and hay. You can see him. He'd probably be about the same range as Mori Bark. Yeah. But he'd be a little tougher of a shot. But you could still get to him. Basically, if you moved out a little more mm -hmm. from the catwalk, you could get him. So you'd probably have to get out on that bale of hay. You could definitely shoot him there. Well, is there a rafter? Um, there are. There are. Forgot about that. You'll get him. <laughs> so anyway, as he steps out, you basically start hearing this chanting. And Moriarty... It's, it's basically, as soon as he comes up yeah. and starts, it's like, okay... 
change the name to him and okay. fire and slime. Okay. And you're going to go ahead and fire? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mori Barkity, basically kind of like as soon as he says it is time, he kind of disengages from Steve. Doesn't even pay attention. He's like, I think I have this sussed. And he basically turns. Okay. Go ahead and roll your firing for moves. And I'm going to spend two. Okay. Just to... <laughs> just push your hand. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Twenty-four. No ghost. No ghost. Ooh. Twenty-seven. <laughs> you basically shoot your slime at Fu Man Chow, <clears throat> and as you do, it gets almost halfway, just over halfway, and it disintegrates as a proton stream hits it and burns it up. And you see Mori Barkity with the proton pack firing at your slime, basically burning it away. And as you guys let off the trigger, he just kind of looks right up in the rafters at you and he's like, I expected as much. <clears throat> so that was that. Yeah. The trap. Mm -hmm. So right when that happens, Sherlock's like, I guess we're going. And he basically <laughs> opens the door taps him on the on the hip says uh, pardon me sir can i have a moment <laughs> and the big guy looks down what he's like uh, this way your mother's yeah and he yeah. steps out and the do the the dane the great dane kind of like rolls up his sleeves and he's like i've been waiting for you mm -hmm. he's like oh i'm sure you have and you see sherlock reach into his trench coat and pull out two sticks Mm -hmm. Like the stick fighting that he does. Oh yeah. And he's like, catch! And they basically start. They basically start sparring. No, they basically start sparring. So let's see. <laughs> okay. All right. Situate myself and my. So they basically start sparring, and he's kind of backing up. So the big great dane kind of is moving toward the cart. And at one point, he goes to hit him with one of the sticks. And uh, the Great Dane knocks it out of his hand. Like, just <laughs> knocks it out of his hand. You do see Sherlock kind of go, okay. like, boom. Oh, <laughs> he runs over oh. to get it. He grabs it. The Great Dane turns. And as he turns, uh, Sherlock just gets the stick. And he's like, ha. Ah. And he turns as the Great Dane is, like, facing him with his back to you. And he just kind of hmm, throws the stick, knocks the Great Dane right between the eyes, and he takes a step, a couple steps back up onto the cart, kind of stunned. And Sherlock's like, I'm <laughs> just. <laughs> so you kind of, hey! He turns around, sees you, takes a step forward. Sherlock barrels into the rain barrel, knocking it over. He falls. Make a moves check. Uh -huh. I spent uh, three brownie points. Okay. Uh, to make sure, this make sure you don't get trapped like you did at the beginning. Right. What's the... Uh, target number is going to be... Well, I'm going to say seven because you oh, set the trap. Jesus. Uh, the main 10, thing... 14, 16, 17, 19, 20, 30. The main thing was that you didn't roll a ghost. But right. you, you definitely just kind of like... <laughs> Almost that cartoonish, take a step back, hover in the air, land. And he just kind of steps down right into that snare, mm -hmm. goes right up in the trap. <laughs> Sherlock kind of grabs the stick and he's like, all right, let's go. <laughs> Good work. I pull up my Leatherman. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you guys run through the front door. Mm -hmm. uh, you did that. You did that. You came through the, the Corgi, Benjamin. <laughs> kind of looks over and he's, hears what's going on or sees those streams and he's like whoa he doesn't move anywhere but he's kind of distracted mm -hmm. and he, he's within arm's reach if you want to try and knock him out or fight him or maybe try and take this to sneak past him or you can just stay here and, and wait um, I will try to sneak past him okay so go ahead and make a moves check 
Ben, this is you. You're gonna make a brains check. So take three six siders. One of them has to be a ghost die. So designate which one that is. Roll it and add them all together. If your ghost die comes up with a six, that means you rolled a ghost and it doesn't count as anything, then let me know. If they all come up other numbers, just total them up and let me know what you get. I get 21. Ooh. I'm gonna sneak. Okay. It's gonna be tough, then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Still with us? Yeah. Uh, four plus a ghost. Four plus a ghost. <laughs> okay, all right. But it works in his favor. It works in mm. Sterling's favor. No, no, it works in the bad guy's, the bad guy's favor. The bad guy rolled a ghost, so it works in his favor? Yeah. Just like a ghost. Yep. Huh. So basically, when you roll a ghost, it counts against you. Right. When the GM rolls a ghost, he gets to use it for good. But he failed. Right. But oh. it's going to work out in his favor somehow. <laughs> That's messed up. So, we'll figure out how that works. Basically, you are going to sneak past the corgi, mm -hmm. and he's kind of like, ah, what? And trying to like look up where the stream came from as you kind of sneak around. So, where are you going to go? <clears throat> well, the other side of the bale is from him, but in sight of the circle. Got it. So I can shoot. Okay. So, you do that. All right. So, what? you get to where you need to go, and still aiming at the circle. All right. Sherlock and you are going to come through the front door. You're still hanging. You shot your slime, and Moriarty stopped it. Mm -hmm. And it looks like he's probably going to, like, oh, expected as much. Aim up towards you. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? I'm going to uh, use my acrobatics to move along the <laughs> rafter. Get up to the rafter. Just, okay. Well, no, move along the rafter. Oh, okay. Got it. So you're going to roll acrobatics. All right, so this is an opposed roll. Nope. I'm good. Um, oh. So I'm going to take three grounding points. Okay. Nothing like rolling a handful of Yeah, dice. no doubt. With a ghost to start with. Oh, that's interesting. Let's see. 10, 20, 30, 39. Okay. With a ghost. All right. So you definitely kind of make it across the rafter, and you're like, yeah, this is easy. I'm going to get all the way where I, right where I need to be. He fires, misses you, obviously, but rolled a ghost. He hits the rafter, which catches fire. Mm hmm. Starts to kind of, the fire starts to envelop and chase you, and mm -hmm. you're like, uh oh, and you rolled a ghost, so the timber basically burns through, the rafter falls, and you fall down in the middle of the summoning circle oh. and land right on your back, like, oh. oh, on the tanks, too. Ow. Yeah, and as you get up and look around, you see the robed figures are all like Shiba Inus, and they're all just kind of chanting and staring at you and you notice their eyes are glowing this weird blue and they're in some sort of trance and as you land you can feel the hair on the back of your neck stand up and you're like oh this is like ionization kind of thing you feel a little lightheaded and you start seeing like a blue haze lift from the floor so you start seeing the circle glow mm -hmm. in the haze and you're just as you're about to set fire to it you see boris Thunk! Right in the middle of it. Well, did any of the rafter fall down? No. No? But it, but when it burned through, it just kind of... Okay. And it's kind of slowly burning, but it hasn't fallen yet. But the structure is probably going to catch fire eventually. Yeah. So he fell off and fell down into the Yes. Circle. Yes. <coughs> and just about then, you hear off to your, off to your right... Hey! <laughs> And around the corner pops that corgi. What are you doing? <laughs> box! <laughs> right in the snow. Oh, thank okay. God, this is not a boxer. 
So if I'm a boxer, I'm a corgi. What's wrong with you? I am using my muscles talent to box him. Got it. Okay. Ben, you are going to have to roll uh, four dice, one of them being the ghost die, and tell me what you get for a total. I got 13. Okay. No ghost. This is for you dodging, so... I'm sure. Hey, man. Sixteen, no ghost. Sixteen, no ghost. Uh, well, so thirteen. Thirteen. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you like, and Chris, where's Rose? Right in the snout. <laughs> right in the snout. And you see the corgi's eyes tear up, and he's like. Oh, ow! That's you. Yeah, Achoo. yeah. He does a achoo in the tongue, achoo in the tongue, <laughs> like dogs do. He's like oh. achoo. <laughs> so he's distracted for a minute for his sneezing thing. Okay. Uh, Sherlock comes running into the room. And I'm gonna stop before I get into the door because Jack Rabbit has a, a, a quick thought. Oh, no. <laughs> he's, he hops, he's like, well. here, boy! Come on! Come on, guys! Go for a run! Go for a run! Come on! Come on! <laughs> All right! All right! This is going to be great. Roll your cool. Because it's getting someone to do what you want them to do. I'm going to the show. That's not bad. No, I didn't. I'm gonna spend a brownie. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Fifteen. Fifteen. Yep. Okay. The Rottweiler and the pit bull, as Sherlock bursts into the room, are getting up and like, oh hey, and from behind, here boy, let's go for a walk. And they look up, and their tongues loll out, and their <laughs> eyes are like real wide, and they're like, and they bolt. <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> and Sherlock just goes right between them. And they both, and they're both headed right at you. I take, oh, I, I try to run around the corner of the barn as quick before them if I can make it. Okay. You do, and as you run around the corner, they come right after you like, arr, arr, arr. That's fine. Come on, let's go. Okay. <laughs> so they're chasing you. Yeah. Okay. I'm take them. <laughs> All right. I'm going to try to run back around and in the door and shut it. Okay, got it. First of all, make a moves check. Oh boy. Fun now. Uh, Just tell me you didn't, whether you got a ghost or not, basically. 15, not even. No ghost. Okay, now make a muscles check. No ghost. Uh, <sighs> Fourteen. Fourteen? Yep. Okay. You by the time you get around this barn, you're like <gasps> and you kind of glance over your shoulder and they're just like, yeah. They're like they're probably they're like, up. Yeah. yeah. Two feet behind you right. and barking and and it's like the Rottweiler and the pit bull <laughs> are trying to bite you. Right. And you're like, oh my god. That keeps, keeps so, me moving. Yeah. Yeah. So basically you've got that stitch in your side and mm-hmm. you've got one more corner to get to the door. And they're just like slobbering. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll leave that there. This is why they call me Jackrabbit. Yeah. <laughs> Living up to your name. All right. Inside the warehouse, the blue haze starts lifting up, and you... What are you going to do? Fire the slime? Mm-hmm. Okay. You start firing the slime up, and as you do, you notice it's coating something that is above you. Mm-hmm. Like two feet above you, that's forming. Yeah. And as it forms, it takes shape under the slime, and it's kind of small, kind of humanoid. And as it gets up, it basically shakes like a dog, and all the slime splatters off. Ew. And you see the final dude here, Genghis Canine. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the Chinese crested dogs? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what he is. 
<laughs> so that one did win the world's ugliest dog competition. Yay! Yeah, I bet. He's got the the shaggy hair and the 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 fur rimmed spike hat, the big long mustache, and he's but he's probably about four foot two, and rail thin. <clears throat> but he's got the Genghis clothes, like Mongolian outfit, and as he shakes, he looks kind of down at you, and you're like, "That's it." Roll your cool. All right. So it's the under pressure account. Because it's pretty pressure. I'll allow it. Yeah. Okay. 16. No ghost. Oh, 25. Sorry, <clears throat> he uses the terror power. Remember the librarian ghost? Mm-hmm. So he's like this little Chinese crested... <laughs> and you're like, that's it? Mm. Then he changes, and he does look like the world's ugliest dog with like the snaggle teeth. His tongue is like four feet long, hanging out the side. Looks like he's undead on half of it. He grows to be like six feet tall, and he just kind of, like barks at you, and you're mm. like, holy crap! So you do kind of want to get out of this circle, back out. Yeah. So you'll probably get out of the circle. He's still hovering in the circle. And as you walk out, he kind of goes back to normal. <laughs> walk out, I'm rolling and jumping. Yeah, you're probably doing somersaults and getting out. Barrel rolls. And once you get out, you are kind of like, oh my god, I, that's scary. <laughs> so you're not going to get up and attack him right away because he's kind of reverted, but he's still watching you. Mm -hmm. And you hear Fu Man Chow. Oh, great Genghis Canine. I wish to draw upon your power and help you resume your empire. Genghis Canine turns around and looks at him. It's <laughs> just that little Chinese crested, like, what? Mm -hmm. He just looks and he's like, how will you be my servant? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, following at the start of the circle. <clears throat> Got it. So, Especially since he's rolling out of the way, so. I'm not going to make you roll, just yeah, roll a ghost. Just, I think I'll just bam. do that. Just make sure you don't get to roll a ghost. No ghost. No ghost. Okay, so you... <laughs> I just keep it up. As you pull the trigger, make a brains check. Uh oh. 15 with a ghost. Okay. <laughs> no, with a ghost. That's not bad. Well, that might be bad. So you're going to fire, and as you fire, mm -hmm. or you get ready to pull the trigger out of the corner of your eye, you see Mori Barkity with his proton pack. And he kind of looks at you, and you can tell he's like looking where your proton stream would go. Mm -hmm. And he kind of aims. No, not crossing the streams. The streams. <laughs> and he looks at you and says, I'm willing to chance it, are you? <laughs> and with the ghost, you're like, yeah, yeah I think I am. <laughs> so, you choose whether you want to fire, but you yep. know that crossing the streams is going to be bad, possibly. I'm doing them anyway. Okay. All right. I mean, for me to be able to tangle with, okay, the dog version. <laughs> Moriarty! Yes! All right. <laughs> so, you guys, uh, you, you make it in the door. Uh, let's see if they... This is comfortable. You're lucky. A three and a four for their brains check. So you duck around the corner, duck in, shut it, and you hear bark, 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 as they run past. They're still running Where around. Go? Where did he go? Yeah. Where did he go? Where did he go? Where did he go? I'm chasing him. Oh, man. He's like a car. So you fooled them. They're still running. You're in the building. You turn around. Sherlock is basically up there, and he looks like he's gone over and is cutting Steve loose. Right. Steve is like, uh, thanks, but that's kind of going on. You got out of the circle, and you're like, oh my god, that was terrifying. And as you look, and you are just like helplessly, well, this is going to suck. Mm -hmm. Basically, you two see Serling aiming at the ring, and you see Moriarty also kind of aiming at the ring, and he's, you see what's going to happen. Mori, Mori Bark, and he says... I'm willing to chance it. Are you? 
And you see Serling grip that smile like, yeah. What are you guys going to do? Because they are about to cross the stream. Actually, yes. oh, go ahead. I'm going to aim the slime gun, slime blower at more Burkity's stream. Try and catch his stream. Okay. Since we've already seen that it it burns away the slime. You don't know but, if it'll be enough to distract but, uh, from that, but it's worth a shot. Basically, did it stop the stream, the proton stream, before? No. No. No, it didn't. Oh, okay. It kind of burned away your slime and kind of shot off. In that case, I'll just shoot, shoot him with the slime. Shoot him with the slime. Yeah. Okay. Where's the ghost trap that was on the ground by Moriarty? Mori uh, the... the Pedal is right by his paw, and the ghost trap, he kicked it up so it's right on the edge of the um, mm -hmm. ring. Now we know if we shoot the person, it kills them. If we shoot the proton pack, we don't know what the hell will happen. But what about a trap? You don't know. Well, he's only taking a risk, so am I. <laughs> Interesting. Right, right in front of him. So... Okay. And he can't trap the spirit, which is the point why I don't know that. But yeah. I'm just thinking, what can I shoot? Because I can't get over there fast enough to do anything. i got to shoot something, so it's going to be in my proton screen. But I, can't, I don't want to shoot a person. Okay. I'm All right. shoot the ghost trap. This is going to get interesting here. Yeah. You ready? Yep. All right. I do have shooting. So. so, really nobody's, except for you, and it's really not even a targeted thing. Yeah. All I'm going to do is have you guys roll a ghost die and see if you get a ghost. Because you're shooting to catch something on fire. He's shooting to interrupt your screen, stream. You're shooting the slime to interrupt his yeah. pack as best you can. And you are shooting the ghost trap. No so, ghost. No, ghost, no, no ghost? No ghost? No ghost. All right. Here's how this goes. Sherlock. And it's all in slow motion. Just like the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes. Right. He gets cut, falls to the ground, and kind of like, oof. Sherlock kind of looks over at Moriarty, and it looks like he's going to tackle him. Mm -hmm. As he gets ready to do that, Serling pulls the trigger. The proton stream ignites. <laughs> Starts going up toward the circle. Mm -hmm. Genghis K9 and Fu Manchow both. <laughs> <laughs> and when they look, you see Fu Manchow, his eyes are like this big instead <laughs> of this big. <laughs> Moriarty pulls the trigger. The proton streams are Stop. coming together. You hit him with the slime. Is it hits him, he's kind of like, oh, but he's holding steady on the course. The slime hits him, and as it does, he kind of shrugs, like shakes it like a dog, and you see one of the straps kind of come loose of his proton pack, but he's still holding the Deuteronomy on. You shoot the ghost trap, you actually hit it, and it launches. Like you hit the corner of it, and it spins, opens up, the light is, exp is opening, right where those streams are going to cross. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so, as this resolves, you see the two streams and the ghost trap just kind of whoop. <laughs> Both streams go into the trap. Mm -hmm. There is a blinding light and an aftershock of basically a shockwave that throws you back. You see briefly before that happens, Genghis K9 is like, no, and he starts to dissipate. <laughs> the light is extraordinarily blinding. You all feel like you've been thrown back like 15 feet and through a brick wall. Yeah. Yeah. You hit the ground. All of you hit the ground, open your eyes, and you're in an attic. <laughs> And you kind of look around, and it's... Is it a normal attic? No. 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 It's still a sea of stuff. And as you kind of look, you're like, what the... Uh, off about 50 feet, you see an attic door open up. I scramble. <laughs> like, okay. I know I'm sore, but goddamn one out of this. 
<laughs> Head count! <laughs> uh, yeah, you're all there. Steve's there. You notice Steve does not have his proton pack. He doesn't have any of his equipment. Oh, crap. We gotta go back and get it. Um, no. Uh, yeah, you kind of look. You have no idea where that wardrobe is. You don't know where it would be. This is like the size of Utah, <laughs> as far as you can tell. So you guys... We'll get your replacement, Steve. Get back in the attic, and it's like, there's the attic door. Everybody kind of bolts for it. Mm -hmm. Steve's like, crap. They have our technology now. That's that's not good. They're going to have, like, the big statue of, of, of uh, uh, like, a Jack Russell Terrier buried in the sand. You blew it all to hell. I know that's going to happen. It's going to be my fault. Shut up, Steve. Come on. <laughs> I'm dragging him as he's bitching. <laughs> Basically, you guys all get out of the attic. Mm -hmm. Hey, Steve, you didn't walk into that barn on your own volition. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you all pile down the ladder, fall, <laughs> land in the hallway in a hump, in a, in a big heap. You hear a thump as the ladder by itself. <laughs> slam. The attic door closes. Is everything quiet? You can smell baking cookies. You hear a voice from downstairs. You hear a door open downstairs. Is everything all right? Don't go in the attic. I, I never do. Good. Are, are the sounds done? Probably not. Oh. Well, I think I think they are, man. Just um, uh, we'll give you um, a, a thirty-day warranty here. Uh, billing. Won't be become effective until after the thirty days. Um, In so that thirty days, Steve says we're going to research what that is because it's not solved yet. We need to find out what's going on. So we can do that. If you hear any more noises, record them. Call us, and uh, we'll come up for you to take care of. It. Steve's like, after we do the research. <laughs> well, right. We yes. got we got we got lots of research to do on your problem here, and uh, yeah, yeah, we should probably ask. You some questions. Well, I'll, I'll do that with her. And he kind of takes her into the living room, and he's like, "So, uh, your father told you not to go up there. Uh, did, he, did he perform rituals up there? You know, was he summoning things?" <laughs> She's like, "I don't think so, but I have family albums." So you're like, "Oh, that's great." So they go in the living room, and Steve's going to kind of question her about what the history of the house, you know, right. what her father may have been doing. So you guys are left. I still got my outfit on. I never took the dog stuff off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she didn't seem to notice. <laughs> she just, is everything all right? Like, well, they're Ghostbusters. Maybe that's it. It fine. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, when you come back, is yeah, it, you would still have it on. Still have it on. Okay. Yep. I still have my mind because I didn't take yeah. my mind. So, yeah, you guys go downstairs. I, so going downstairs, I kind of wistfully look back up the stairs. This door, I was kind of wanting to get some canine cigars just to try those out. I really want some dog food. Dog food? Oh, wow. So, you guys come downstairs and yep. Steve finishes the questioning? Alright. I'll clean myself up while he's questioning her. Right. So, just so you guys know, that was the module and it's not done because you have an attic to investigate for the next time. What's the name of the module? Oh, uh, the game is a foot. Or the game is a paw, I guess mm -hmm. you could call it. The game is a paw. Mm -hmm. It's a paw. And... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there were other things that you would have encountered, and I didn't get to do them in the dog world, but maybe I'll go back someday. Like when they, they were going to offer you drinks. Oh, God. But they would be bowls. Right. And, just, and they had empty pumps. <laughs> yeah. No, they wouldn't laugh at it. They'd drink it, but they drink out of bowls. Right. So. Would you like the a public drink? restroom. Yeah. Right. You never got Already. to find out how that worked. Never did figure that one out. How's that three seashells thing work? <laughs> <laughs> so that's it, folks. Thanks, Dale. So I hope that was good. That was awesome. Pennies. Oh, yeah. yeah. Brownie, points. brownie points. Brownie points. Okay. So I'm going to give you each ten brownie points because you, you did go and you, you kind of, as far as you know, defeated Genghis K-9, but there were some things that didn't go right. I have more brownie points than God right now. You can trade them in. Raise your stats. Um, What's the turn in for stat raising? Uh, I think, if I remember right, it's 30 to get a stat. Let me check. So yeah, I had that idea about 
Sherlock Holmes being all dogs, and I just thought that would be that would be hilarious. <laughs> so, the dog know. puns were well, well. Yeah, yeah thank um, you. <laughs> good job, Bill. That was wonderful. Yeah, that, that, that was wagon tail. Yep. Ah. Thank you. Thank you. The dog days are coming. <laughs> Jackrabbit's inspiration is the Red Green. <laughs> I remember that. So that's, that's why he always carries duct tape with him. Thank you for joining us, everybody who's still here. Yes. yes thank, thank you, you for much. watching and hang out. We're going to do some character fixing up and stuff like that. And then we'll have a quick talk with you guys. Easy little one shot modules. Yep. I came up with it yesterday. Well, next, I had the uh, idea. Of it. Next week, we should be returning to our Warhammer uh, campaign with, with everything help. willing and going on. Uh, if not, don't worry, we'll find something else that we're going to whip out on you guys and surprise you. So thanks for hanging out and seeing this craziness. Don't forget uh, Ghostbusters Incorporated, the West End Games version is what we're playing. International. International. West, West, Ghostbusters International. Look it up. You're going to be shocked at what it costs to buy these books now. <laughs> yeah, I've had this one for years. Don't I forget I to... Uh, rebound. Don't forget to visit our YouTube. This whole game will be lit, will be posted on our YouTube within an hour minute, hour of time by our wonderful friends at Kilted Elephant Productions. And uh, don't forget to go to Amazon and check out our wish list. You're going to have to be amused. What we have there. We will use everything on that wish list. There's nothing there that's just for the fun of it, even though it is fun. Go visit our link tree. There's also a link for coffee or Ko-Fi or whatever you pronounce it if you want to help us out with some donations to help us get a few other things situated. And uh, I think the fans only thing is Dale possibly doing some graphic artwork. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Huh? Only fans? Yeah. <laughs> Good. With a little preparation. If there's anything you'd like to see, by the way, of us or any suggestions, comments, things like that, please let us know. We are yeah. very open to anybody telling us something they'd like to see or hear or what have you. That's how we will get better in doing this situation. So, so it costs 30 bounty point, or brownie points to gain a point in a trait. And if you are ever in dire straits and need to get more brownie points and you have none, you can trade a point of a oh. trait, but you only get okay. 20. Question. But it's 30 brownie can points can increase the trait. Muscles? And naturally your talent so moves up. That's probably what I should do, muscle and brain, I think. No. I'm gonna do brownie. Well, you can only do one. Only one? Yeah. Yeah, so you, you can, can only do one at a time, Rob, so just oh, okay. do one now. So I'm just gonna do brain. Well, alright, because my climb, that's why I was thinking the muscle. And then that yeah. adjusts the brain's so yeah, you're, to you yeah, if you increase your talent will increase your muscles by t by one, mm -hmm. that'll go to three, and then your climb would be at six. All right, then that's what I'm going to do there. Cool. All right, and then uh, that'll take you to fifteen points. Take it down to fifteen. Yeah, All and right. I think I've decided if you want to trade or change your talent to something else, it'll cost fifteen brownie points. Can it'll still stay the same rate as three dice above your trait, but you'll have a new talent. Can you yeah. just add to a talent? Like, add more than one talent? No. One talent. So you got to change it. Okay. Oh, but it's only 15 brownie points. Right. And you, I want to make it to where you can't just change it for... Well, I'm going to have fire weapon this adventure. It's got to be... Oh, right. And I'm thinking every time you change it, it might actually increase. So if you want to go from, okay. you know, climb to run, mm -hmm. 15 points. And if you want to change it again... Now it's 30, 30. 45. Yeah, because that, that way it discourages you from just changing willy nilly all the time. I'm not changing anything. Like yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, do I need to tell him or does it matter? Yeah. I mean, you could tell him. Because you, you increased your muscle by one? Yeah, I increased the muscle by one, which increased the climb by one. Okay. That'll work. And then yeah. you can save it for next time and do three. 
Yeah. Thank increased the brains. Oh, here's your ghost game. Yeah. Pass that down. Yeah. Increased your brains? Yeah. From okay. two to three. Okay. Good game, Bill. That was fun. I'm yeah. glad you liked it. <laughs> I have to I always love Ghostbusters. Well, yeah. One of my favorites. Mm. Just because of the silliness of all. Yeah. Toon was fun, too, though. It was a lot like Ghostbusters. Toon was a lot like Ghostbusters. Well, even yeah. more so insanity than anything. I'll have to think about Steve. Yeah, it was funny because I was like, I looked up smartest dog breeds, and the two smartest were the Golden Retriever mm-hmm. and the Border Collie. So I'm like, okay, well, the, I looked them up, and I'm like, Golden Retriever's got to be Sherlock Holmes. Right. But then I was like, ooh, the Border Collie's black and white, and I'm like, that would be Moriarty. <laughs> and then I was like, what can I do for Watson? And I just thought, Dachshund. That should be his name. Well, then he's a Dachshund. And he's described in the books as being stocky. Uh, and like in the barrel chested and I'm like well that's Sadoxin and uh, Lestrade is actually described as a wiry little bulldog of a man (laughs) and I'm like wiry little bulldog that's a French bulldog alright should I go ahead and end this and then of course Fu Manchu I was like oh that'd be cool that Fu Manchu alright should I go ahead and end this and then of course Fu Manchu I was like oh that'd be cool that Fu Manchu (laughs) I was like Fu Manchu and 